And then there were eight, just eight drivers left to decide who will be the 2023 Xfinity Series champion as the NASCAR playoffs roll into Las Vegas for one of the biggest races of the year because a win today for a playoff team is an automatic berth into the championship four. at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Whoever can get the job done, whoever can win, is gonna be the one to make it to that final four. If we can get there, then we're gonna be a force to be reckoned with. And winning the championship is everything at this level. There would be nothing cooler than to stand on that stage at Phoenix. Welcome everyone to Countdown to Green from Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the kickoff for the round of eight in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. Today, we are high above the Speedway in the booth alongside the Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton. I am Marty Snyder. You know, Jeff, no matter where a playoff team is in the playoff standings right now to kick off the round of eight, do they have to be thinking we need to win to be able to make it to the championship four? I don't see anybody in the playoffs today that I feel like has to win. I think the focus for most teams, and all these guys actually, is don't leave here in a situation where you do have to win one of the next two races. This is a very, this is a very competitive series, and you can see how close the points are. There's three very unique racetracks coming up. So yes, I think every one of these guys could point themselves in. However, we've seen so many mistakes in the playoffs, you don't want that to happen and dig yourself a hole that you then have to jump out of. So DJ, Jeff mentions the unique racetracks. Two mile and a half to start the round of eight of Las Vegas and then Miami next week. John Nemechek has won the last two mile and a half races. Does that give him an edge over everybody else? 100%. It gives him an edge in the confidence that he has the confidence his team has for him and everyone else knows that he is the man to beat. Even though he's going to be starting at the rear of the field today, he feels quite confident he can drive his way there. It was a mechanical issue that they had to repair uh, right during practice yesterday. But don't think that, that for a minute he's thinking that he's going to get stage points in the first stage mm. coming from the back of the field. So he has proven he's the man to beat. He's got the team to do it. I think the most experienced there. And he's got a great crew chief in Ben Bayshore that keeps him kind of grounded and focused on the job at hand. Well, the round of eight includes 20-year-old Wisconsin native Sam Mayer, thanks to his walk-off win last Saturday in Charlotte. Without a win, there was no tomorrow for Sam Mayer. But he came in here and did every single thing right today. Three career wins, and the most important one, Sam Mayer wins his way to the round of eight. Oh, boy. I'm speechless. So proud of you guys. Nice job. Awesome, Sam, man. Way to drive that thing all day long. He has had some big step-up moments, and this one is the biggest of all. Winning solves everything. That's the name of the game. Crazy to advance with the win, and then Sam to do it in such dominant fashion. How fun was that? Yeah, I mean, that was best-case scenario. Our Hux Accelerate Chevrolet last week was obviously the best in the field we uh we had a, a car unbeatable like xfinity's ng so hopefully we can do that again today i mean we have a lot of hms power under the under the hood but uh we we struggled a little bit yesterday so hopefully we can be a little better today with obviously the weather being a lot different i think it'll come to us a little bit obviously we're going to move up we saw that in cup practice and qualifying they moved around right away so i think with the weather being different i think we'll be able to have a better car Good luck today, Marty. He won three of the seven road courses this year for his first three career wins. Now it's time to do it on an oval. Yeah, he's got to get that first oval win if he wants to advance, no doubt about it. I'd love to bring the uh, boss man, Dale Earnhardt Jr., into the conversation. Jr., do you get the sense that we're seeing Sam Mayer kind of mature right before our eyes? Well, he's going through the process, and the jury's still out exactly what he's learned. So, you know, he's done so good on the road courses, but what has he learned on the ovals? We're going to find out today. Uh, he only 20 years old. I mean, he turned 20 in the midsummer, so still a young guy. I think we ask a lot of him in his progress, but he's on the main stage in the playoffs, and he has to get rid of those first lap mistakes. We've seen it time and time again where he gets himself into the wall and in trouble early in this races. And so if he can eliminate those mistakes, those are the ones that we point out to him, but we can't drive the car for Sam. Sam has to go out on the racetrack and not do those things going forward in the playoffs. Yeah, the decision making has been so much better for Sam Mayer. A, 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 when he makes good decisions, that's when he's dangerous. He has the speed. There's no question whether Sam Mayer can go fast around a racetrack or not. 
The question is, in those split-second decisions where you don't get a chance to think it out, has he learned those lessons at only 20 years old? And that's really the question that's yet to be answered. But what I've seen so far in the playoffs, I believe that he has made strides, and he can he can add all that stuff to up together and make a playoff run. Yeah, and we need to see what he can do. Junior just pointed out about the ovals yet. Those three wins came on road courses. you got to win on an oval if you're going to be the champion in this series this year. And was it just me, or did that sound like – Dell Jr.'s dad talking about him <laughs> early yeah, in his yeah, career. Right, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think he's heard those hey, words I think before. Yeah, I was going to say he's giving out advice that he has gotten <laughs> before. Uh, it seems appropriate, DJ. We're in Vegas, right? Let's check yep. out the odds for the race today. And uh, the favorite, John Hunter Nemechek. Any surprise? Uh, the fact that the odds have actually come down and he's starting in the rear of the field yeah. uh, from that, it just tells me that everyone understands just how good John Hunter Nemechek is on these mile-and-a-half tracks. But he's got a lot of competition there. Uh, Josh Berry on the pole and has won here a couple of times. Yeah, DJ mentions it. The favorite has a little bit of work to do today, Kim Kuhn. He is starting last on the field. That's right, Marty. After he was not able to make a qualifying lap yesterday. So first race of the round, what do you guys feel like you have to do today and how much more challenging is it going to be coming from the back? I want to go win the race. Uh, I feel like we had a really fast uh, Pi Barker Toyota GR Super yesterday in practice and wasn't quite happy with the balance. So um, we uh, we definitely made some changes overnight, uh, studied a lot of film, a lot of data. Uh, thanks to you guys in the booth. I watched the whole broadcast. Thanks for all the nice things you guys said. Um, so excited to go today. Uh, hopefully our car is as fast as Xfinity 10G, and we can drive through the field. Uh, my goal is to go get stage points, stage one, and definitely feel like we're capable of doing that. So uh, just got to play the race smart, uh, be smart, not put ourselves in a bad position or get in someone else's mess or create our own problems. Um, we do have a pretty good points cushion to the line so um, it's going to be all about play to smart and uh, looking forward to trying to go win the race today and lock ourselves into Phoenix. I know you have that points cushion and you want to win to get into the championship for that path though points wise what do you guys have to do to make that championship four run without a win? Uh, I can't tell you exactly. Um, we, uh, we've definitely dove into some numbers and uh, Ben and our two engineers have been working really hard on that. And uh, we've had some meetings uh, about what we feel like we need to do and our average finish with, without playoff or without using playoff points or, or without stage points. So um, I kind of know that in the back of my head. I uh, don't want to make any of our days worse in, in compounds. So the biggest thing for us is just going to be to keep our head on straight, execute the way that we need to, and just go race. It's it's just a race. Uh, so we've been doing it all year. We've been racing all year. We've had really fast speed, and uh, I'm looking forward to today. I hope it keeps getting hotter and hotter and a little bit slicker. Uh, if it does that, it will play right into our hand. Sounds like some trade secrets this team has got on their path to the championship for Marty. We'll see if they can march their way forward today. Yeah, I think he's going to be fun to watch today, Kim. So we saw what these sports books thought about the race win. What about the uh, championship odds, according to DJ? Who do you have as your favorite? Yeah, that's the man right there. He is the favorite coming in here. I mean, he has the, the most points uh, coming into this round. He's got the most wins this year, uh, and he has the best team. And, and that's not criticizing anyone else's team, but, you know, there's always a team that's better than everybody else else and this young man's doing his job i agree with you he is a championship favorite but I, there's two guys that i got my eyes on justin algar uh this guy has tons of speed there's been moments in this year where this was the best team they clawed back a lot of points got some wins uh he's been in the championship round five times so he's been there done that uh he's ready to win a championship and then also cole custer uh those cards have been really quick they started out at the beginning of the year it wasn't that good didn't have that much speed but they found it, and when they found it, you consistently see this guy up front. Remember, he is a cup driver that has come back, much like the same as Nemechek, come back into the Xfinity to earn himself back to the Cup Series. <laughs> and, and that's what he's trying to prove, not only to everyone else, sponsors, car owners, et cetera, but also to himself, that he is a championship caliber driver, and I think this year's a year he can make it happen. Well, Las Vegas has always been known for its gambling, but over the last few years, it's really become one of the better sports towns in the country. Of course, UNLV has always been here, but add in the Raiders, the Aces playing in the WNBA Finals right now, plus the Golden Knights coming off the Stanley Cup earlier this year and the win there. And now in its 25th year, the Las Vegas Motor Speedway has been a part of the scene here in Vegas as well.
The official app of NASCAR Tracks has the latest race and event information from your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free and start using today. Yes, that's a solar eclipse, DJ, here at the track today. Never got dark, but it was still pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, I got here this morning, it was dark, and then the sun <laughs> came up, and then it got dark again. Kind of a strange uh, It was, the, the light was very weird. It was uh, very different, but such a cool sight here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway today. Jess, here, how's the uh, Xfinity Series standings look entering the round of eight? Well, you heard John Hart and Emichet talking about what they needed to do to advance. You see the point lead he has, that's why. Not make big mistakes, but look at the rest of it. Look at the gap between fifth and eighth. Mm. Almost no point. Points, and then from fifth to fourth, it is close. So that's all these guys have a shot. They have an opportunity to make the next round. This is a very tight point battle. Well, twice in his career, Cole Custer has come up one spot short of winning the championship. Why could that change this year? It might be the relationship with his crew chief and longtime friend, Jonathan Tony. Here's our Nate Ryan. Cole Custer and crew chief Jonathan Tony have a working partnership with a 20 year foundation. I've probably known Cole since, I don't know, 2004, so I guess when he was four or five years old. My dad's always worked for Haas, you know, back in the day when it was you know, Ward Burton, Mike Bliss. I think I remember, first time I remember Cole, he had these little hilly shoes on, and he'd come rolling down a, a ramp that we had in the back of the truck. Tony joined Gene Haas's team before it was transformed by Tony Stewart's arrival. He was the lead engineer for Stewart's third championship. You know, when Tony came around, the whole thing just shot off. Stuart Haas Racing had expanded into the Xfinity Series, while a teenage Cole emerged as a rising star. First time I went to the racetrack with him as an engineer was in 17 at Homestead, and just the way he had prepared for that weekend. Looking for their first win, Cole Custer, he's going to win in Miami! After 11 Xfinity wins and two championship round appearances, Cole was promoted to Cup and won as a rookie. You know, I was excited for him, and that was proof that he was prepared. Returning to Xfinity in 2023, Cole had a plan for winning the elusive title. This is what Cole Custer came back to the Xfinity Series to do. You know, we were looking at crew chiefs before the year, and I just kind of knew JT was the guy. You know, doesn't have an ego. He's going to really communicate with you what you need. Good job there, bud. Wait, hang there. We need to get a little bit better. We've been able to make ourselves into a championship contender. They really don't know what we can do in these last races yet. We put up a good fight. I mean, that was exactly what we need to do. And that crew chief driver relationship is so important. You have to trust each other because you have to be willing to say things to each other that might make you mad, that might, <laughs> you know, push the other guy. The honesty, straightforwardness, that's the only way you can be successful in this sport. Okay, guys, time to go on the clock. Make a case for why this driver below the cut line right now will advance to the championship four. DJ, we'll start with you and the driver we just heard from. Yeah, can I say any more about it? Uh, we, <laughs> sure. we believe in this young man. He's going to get the job done. If you think that you don't have to worry about Cole Custer for this championship and moving into that championship four, then you're mistaken. They have a great relationship, and he's an outstanding driver. Yeah, Chandler Smith, this is a huge race for this team. Very fast here in the spring. And in the spring, this car, this driver, consistently were up front contending for wins. They're going to have to get back to that speed if they're going to have a chance to go to the championship for in Phoenix. Yeah, and I know uh, with Sheldon Creed, we're supposed to be talking how they advance. I think it's going to be very difficult, especially with his announcement this week that he is not going to be back with RCR. Uh, bad timing with all of that. Uh, they've struggled. I think their struggle continues. Yeah, Sammy Smith driving very fast cars at Joe Gibbs Racing. They have had to clean some stuff up. A lot of wrecks, a lot of incidences. Sammy had to clean it up. But when the playoffs started, he did it. Three, in the last three races, they were clean, and that's why they moved to this round. It's going to have to do the same to move to the next. When we come back, we'll tell you about one of the coolest stories we've seen on Pit Road in quite a while. Plus, is this finally Justin Allgaier's year to win a championship? DJ and Burton will discuss that next. for the start of the round of eight. Nine of Tyler Reddick. And Hemrick's in it. Hemrick's in it as well. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> a lot of damage to the right front. The 60 goes around, Frisco hard into the wall. There's no way you can race three wide that aggressively without somebody losing control. Oh, gosh. Now inside, three wide, three wide, inside. Three playoff drivers in that wreck, all with big damage. Correct here. 
with Ross Chastain. He's going to earn his first win in the Xfinity Series. Win number five for Tyler Reddick. Chase Briscoe goes back to back. No contact onto the wall with Barry. Three wide. Barry still out front. I wasn't letting off. That was for a trip to Phoenix. Las Vegas starts off the round of eight, and it is a fun, wide racetrack, multi-groove. But sometimes that means you're going to have to run three wide with your competition. You add in the pressure of the playoffs and drivers willing to risk it all to move forward in the playoffs. On a slick racetrack, mistakes are going to happen. And when that happens, those playoff hopes take hard hits, just like the cars and the drivers themselves, Marty. Yeah, you see those highlights. I kind of get nervous for what's going to happen today. Well, Justin Allgaier is hoping to do exactly what he's already done in the playoffs this year, win the first race of a round, which he did at Bristol earlier this year. Right now, Allgaier is with Dave Burns. Well, Marty, Justin Allgaier has made a habit this year out of winning at tracks he has never won at. So what about it today? Uh, it'd be a great day to win a race. Obviously, coming out here to Vegas, I got a lot of second place runs here. I love this racetrack. It's been one of the first ones as a mile and a half that I really kind of took a liking to and, and have loved coming out here ever since. So we got a work cut out for us. You know, we qualified seventh, lucky number seven, in Vegas on Friday the 13th, but today's a new day. And, you know, our brand 70th anniversary Camaro was really good on the long run yesterday in practice. We knew that was going to hurt us in, in, in qualifying a little bit, but, um, you know, obviously the goal is always be as fast as, fast as Xfinity 10G. We got a car that we think is good to, to do that on the long run. We were really good here in the spring and had a violation on a restart. So I won't be going below that white line that's right over here and uh, came back to second. So you're looking forward this afternoon and going to have a lot of fun. Marty, I think all that math that Justin did will work out. <laughs> He'll be tough to beat today. Yeah, he would love to get the first Vegas win for him. You know, DJ, his story kind of feels like Danny Hamlin's story on the Cup side. Been to the championship for so many times, never won it. Will this year be different for Justin Allgaier and the 17? That is the question, but I guess you want an answer for me with <laughs> that. So, an answer, yeah. You know, we, I'm going to put it like this. We hope that it is because it will be hard-earned and well-deserved for Justin Allgaier. He's done everything in this sport except get that trophy for the season-ending championship. Uh, we see the speed. We know the team. It's all there. Just have to put it together. He's very capable. It, it's it's small things that have kept them right. It's it's you you make the wrong mistake at the wrong time. You don't have the right speed at the right day. Whatever it is, they're so close. They've been and I had opportunities multiple times. I think if you put him if you, if he goes to Phoenix, it's a very relaxed Justin. He's different than he was five years ago. He's much more relaxed. I think he's in the best opportunity he's had. Well, Kim Coon is down on pit road and she has found one of the cooler stories of the weekend. Kim. That's right, Marty. The path for the fueler of the number 28 car to NASCAR was a little unusual, at least more than most. Originally, Brooklyn native Jen Calandrillo didn't know much about NASCAR until a friend got hooked her on it. In 2010, she decided to move to North Carolina in search of a job in NASCAR. She worked in a couple different capacities in the sport, including PR. That was until two years ago. While working at Starcom, a co-worker suggested she go over the wall and fuel cars. So she asked a pit coach about it, and she was told, first of all, she was too old, and second of all, she didn't weigh enough. She needed to gain about 40 pounds because a fueler needs to be about twice the weight of a full fuel can. And so she did it. She gained 40 pounds of muscle. And now at the age of 47, she is among the oldest on pit road in today's race. And I love this part. She is the only female fueler on pit road. That is awesome, Kim. Jeff, she's braver than me, I'll tell you that. I wouldn't go fuel a car. Right, as much fire as I've seen lately <laughs> coming around that fuel, yeah, I don't want any part of that. Even beyond yeah. that, just getting Great on pit road with those there, cars though. flying yeah. everywhere. Yeah, congratulations, Jen, on that accomplishment. Well, coming up, who do Jeff and DJ have in their championship four? Plus, Dale Earnhardt Jr. will explain why he thinks the round of eight is the toughest round in the playoffs for the drivers. He'll tell you why next. Once we can get going, we're going to be hard to stop. Nice work, homie. Win and we're in. The level of intensity just keeps rising throughout the playoffs. I love it. Bring all the pressure on. I've worked my whole life since I've been racing to get to this point. It's time to go hoist that big trophy at the end of the year. The round of eight starts today. A win by a playoff team means a seat at the championship table in just three weeks. You know, Dale Jr., the last round was really tough from a racing and a track perspective. Is this round the toughest on the drivers mentally? I think a lot of drivers have called this round hell. Every time we talk to them in the media, 
they say that the playoff pressure just continues to get worse and worse as they go through the playoffs. Well, here we are. They are so close to realizing that opportunity to get to Phoenix. It's right here now in front of them. And I think there's three kind of drivers in this Xfinity field. There's young drivers that will crumble under that pressure early in their careers. There's young drivers that are quite frankly oblivious to how big this moment is. And then there are the drivers that are big enough for this moment. They're mentally tough for this moment and every moment going forward. And what we want to find out through this round, Marty, is who is who. Yeah, Jeff, what do you think about the round of eight from a driver's perspective? Oh, I, I, think, it's, I think it's grueling. There's no question. It, it, it's very tough. But, you know, you talk about young drivers versus experienced drivers. This is an opportunity to expose a young driver to, to the pressure, to the experience, because the next time they get in it, they'll be better. Even if you don't advance to the next round, you can't view it as a complete failure. You have to view it as part of the, part of the process. And they want to make it to the next level, and this is where they get tested for that. Okay, your test coming up right now, DJ. Who's in your championship? <laughs> for? Well, I'm going to go with uh, Cole Custer. We talked about him earlier. Justin Allgaier uh, certainly is going to be there, I believe. I'm going with Chandler Smith to, to Whoa, make his way wow. in there. Could be with the win in these next <clears throat> couple of weeks. And then, of course, the favorite, in my opinion, John Hunter Nemechek. All right. So you and I agree a lot. <laughs> John Hunter Nemechek, Cole Custer, Algar, those three are very similar. However, my fourth guy, I got Sam Mayer. I think he has connected the dots. I think he has learned hmm. how to deal with this pressure. He's fast. I see Sam Mayer moving on. So wait, neither one of you picked Austin Hill? Explain yourself, DJ. <laughs> we don't have time. I don't, I don't know how we did that. After he won the race here in the spring, nobody went with Austin Hill. I do think if they get to Phoenix for Austin Hill and that RCR team, they, they have struggled at that racetrack. That would be a tough task for them to be able to win the championship this year. When we come back, other than championship Saturday, is today the most important race of the playoffs, plus the pre-race ceremonies. It's all coming up next from Las Vegas. It's time to start the round of eight in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. Three races to decide who gets to race for a championship in Phoenix. Today in Las Vegas, the first seat on championship Saturday is up for grabs. So, DJ, does that make today, then, one of the most important races of the year, in your opinion? Uh, the most important because up to this point, a win got you to the next round. Now, this gets you as part of the championship four. Which is incredible, and that's what everybody set out the year to do. So, Jeff, which driver playoff wise needs a very good result here today at Vegas. I think it's clear Sheldon Creed they haven't had the pace that they really need. He announced he's leaving RCR this week. That puts a lot of pressure on this team. A little bit of conflict with he and his teammate today is very important. Yeah so his teammate Austin Hill we left him out of our championship four yep. because he needs a good day here today to show that. Yeah he needs to sweep the year here at Vegas if he wants to be in the championship four. Time for today's pre-race ceremonies from Las Vegas. <laughs> Fans, at this time, we ask that you please rise if you're able and remove your hats as the NTC 11th ACR Horse Detachment Mounted Color Guard presents our nation's colors. And please remain standing as ALSCO Uniforms Representative Chris Wilson offers today's invocation. Our kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here today to celebrate this great sport of NASCAR. We're so thankful that we can be here with this wonderful weather. Um, Lord, we are thankful that uh, we can be here in, in peace and would bless those that are, are suffering, that they may be, may be blessed. Lord, we, we thank the, the sponsors like Alsco Uniforms that make this great sport run. And we ask today that for the safety of the drivers, that we will see great competition and that they will be kept safe and it will be an enjoyable day. Lord, please bless those that are struggling or suffering and please bless us to help find those that are struggling and to lift them up. These things we pray for in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome local violinist Carolyn Salvador Avila.
Carolyn's. Boy, she did a great job. Good job, Carolyn. First spot in the championship four is officially up for grabs. A round of eight for the Xfinity Series starts when we come back on USA. Crossing county lines just to make my name in the city. I work for this for all these years and I wouldn't break her back down. No. I fought through all my fears and all of my frustrations. You can see the light is getting clear. I know, I know, I know I'm taking it down. It's my time. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. The Allsco uniforms 302 from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As Marty mentioned in our free race ceremonies, this is the first opportunity for drivers to lock themselves into that championship four. Hello, everyone. Alongside our crew chief, Steve Letard, Rick Allen with you. And Steve, we have eight playoff drivers, and of those playoff drivers, have any of them set themselves apart yet? Well, I think when you look at the standings, the three at the top, they have definitely separated themselves when it comes to points, and they should have. Those three drivers have won 14 of the first 29 races. So if you are Justin Allgaier or Austin Hill or John Hunter Nemechek, you have worked to be in this position. The other side of that, though, is this position does bring pressure. While everyone would like to be thought of as the favorite, Rick, I think coming in as a favorite, anything short of a championship four has to feel like a disappointment. On the other side of that coin, some of the youth behind them, Sammy Smith, maybe Sam Mayer on this hot streak coming off a win, I'm not sure if they know what they don't know. They're young, they're youthful, they're energetic, they're excited to be here. I don't think they feel the same pressure. All right, a guy that's below that cut line is Sheldon Creed. With more on him, let's go to Kim Kuhn. And Rick, it was announced this week's playoff driver Sheldon Creed will not return to RCR next season. And I talked to the team about it, and they admitted there was a lot of disappointment. But despite parting ways at the end of the year, they told me they are using it as motivation to finish this season and this championship run really strong together. Sheldon struggled in qualifying. Dave, he'll start 15th, but the team assured me they are better than that starting position. Kim, when you're in Las Vegas, you got to like numbers. So the 21 car of Austin Hill, well, he's plus 21 to the cut line starting the round of eight. That is a very good place to be. As for his race car this weekend, well, he can base a lot of it off of what he did here in the spring. That was win the race. But he said there were some things that were a little bit different with the race car this time that makes him unsure exactly where they'll be when they start the race here. Next at the track here, it is time to get the engine started at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the beginning of the round of eight. Three races here, and then the championship in Phoenix. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome the founding partner and administrative operations manager from the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation, Tabitha Burton. On behalf of ALSCO Uniforms employees and everyone affected by breast cancer, drivers, start your engines! Okay, Cole, you can fire up here whenever, uh, whenever you get your hands fired. Engines are fired ready. down here on pit road, drivers tugging on those belts, positioning the microphones inside their helmets. They're getting ready to talk to their spotters up on top of the tower to make sure the communication with the radio is good. They're getting ready to get the green flag in this race, but before that, all the planning, all the hours in the simulator, all the hours in the office talking about the strategy that's going to help them win this race. Soon the spotter's going to let them know that the pace car is pulling off. They too will drop the car in grill in gear and pull away themselves. The motion of the car slightly calming the nerves that are building in suspense of the green flag. That's what's coming up next after the break. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company, and by Northern Tool. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Ready for the start of the round of eight. Nine of Tyler Reddick. And 
Embrickson. Embrickson in as well. Draw oh. mm. the damage to the right front. The 60 goes around. Frisco hard into the wall. There's no way you can race three wide that aggressively without somebody losing control. Oh, gosh. Now inside, three wide, three wide. Inside. Three playoff drivers in that wreck, all with big damage. Correct here. Ross Chastain, he's going to earn his first win in the Xfinity Series. Win number five for Tyler Reddick. Chase Briscoe goes back to back. No contact onto the wall with Barry, three wide. Barry still out front. I wasn't letting off. That was for a trip to Phoenix. And for the Xfinity Series, it's the second round of playoffs, and it starts right here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. One year ago, it was Chandler Smith who looked as though he was going to dominate this race as he went out and led 118 laps. But coming up on the final lap, take a look at what happens. And again, this was earlier this year, not last year, earlier this year. Chandler Smith gets passed by Austin Hill and by the seven of Justin Allgaier, and that makes him finish third in that race. But Steve, obviously he's got a lot that he has learned. Let's talk to the driver of the 16. Let's see if we can dial him up here. Hey Chandler, it's the guys in the NBC booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Well, man, sat on the pole here in the spring, a led a career-high 118 laps. Back again with a fast car starting fourth. Does it have that same feel? Man, I, I think so. It feels uh, pretty similar to the spring. The track's obviously a lot hotter, a lot more greasier out. The bumps the one and two is a lot more abrasive than it was in the spring. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, you did a good job explaining kind of the weather and the situation, but let's talk about what's on the line. The round of eight, a championship for birth. Um, what does that pressure and that opportunity in front of you feel like? No pressure. All windows of opportunity to be able to compete at the Xfinity Series and uh, compete at a high level and have a ch chance to uh, run for a championship. That's just a blessing in my book. Well, man, it sounds great. We appreciate you taking the time. I know the fans do. Uh, good luck today. It's going to be exciting 201 laps. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. So no pressure out of the 21-year-old. You think about that, running for a possible championship. Opportunity. I like that word. Like, he feels what he has in front of him is an opportunity. And that's kind of about what we talked about. Those favorites, they may feel it was a pressure. Take a look at the starting lineup. Uh, as you mentioned, Chandler Smith will be there in row four. But it's Josh Berry and Colt Custer that will start up in the front row. Yeah, Parker Etzlaff with a great qualifying run right there in row three. Uh, behind him, you have Justin Allgaier, Riley Herbst, the Las Vegas native, has to go to the rear. Big week, and now he's going to be returning next year in that same 98 car. Going to have some work on hand starting from the back early. A little bit further back, starting in row six, Parker Kligerman eliminated from the playoffs uh, from the last race. And then we have playoff drivers Sam Mayer and Sheldon Creed. And again, the big news for Sheldon Creed is it was announced this week he won't be back with RCR next year. Don't know his plans yet. Yeah, my Myatt Snyder in that 19 car back in row 10. That's that Joe Gibbs entry. Great opportunity for Myatt. Josh Williams is going to go to the rear. You see that in row 13. Ryan Reed, welcome back to the series. Ran last week but what a great uh, situation for ryan reed coming back i mean uh, and running again in the xfinity series after uh, a couple wins already in his career yeah five years absent and have a great speed on the way back into the car and then you see the name and we're going to have focus on it early john hunter nemechek starting last did not get a chance to qualify due to a mechanical issue all right let's check back in track side and we'll start with junior junior what's the most important part of restarts that we're going to see Restarts are a lot of fun to watch at this racetrack. They're tough for the drivers, though, because you can block low, but you open up the middle. If you block high, you also open up the middle. One way or another, you're going to be three wide at some point in this race going into turn one. You've got to try to avoid contact. Anything that's going to knock off the momentum of your car off of turn two, you're going to have even more people trying to attack you down the back straightaway, Kim. 
Well, Junior, as we look at drivers who could have a really strong day today, you cannot ignore Parker Kligerman. He finished top four in the last two mile and a half races, including a runner up finish at Texas. And although the 48 is no longer in the title run, there's still a lot to race for in terms of points position. And when I talked with the team this morning, they told me they had to work on the car a little bit in yesterday's practice to get it to Parker's liking. They said it was really rough on the bumps and on the splitter, but with the adjustments they made, Dave, they think they have a top five car here today. Kim, Josh Berry has not won in 2023, but his teammates have won four of the last eight races this year. So there is speed at the Junior Motorsports Camp. And even though he was eliminated from the playoffs last week at the Roval, he hasn't lost pace. He's on the pole today. Josh Berry will lead him to green, Marty. Dave, so much has been made about Cole Custer's move from full-time cup racing to full-time Xfinity Series racing. And he admits early in this season, he struggled with having to relearn how to drive an Xfinity Series car. The low point of all that happened here in the spring he said we were terrible in that race he told me and he said that moment I knew we had to do things differently I had to do things differently and I've had this one circled for a long time I feel like we have a car that can win the race today and what a turnaround that would be Rick from what the team thinks was their low point of the year here earlier this year could they maybe win today and advance to the championship for it might just happen yeah Marty and that is such an important position to be able to win this race the first of this round and you can even start preparing for Phoenix a little bit earlier than everyone else we see the Toyota GR Supra that is the official pace car for today's Xfinity Series playoff race out in front of the field just a little bit further back in the field is the seven of Justin Allgaier he is starting in the fourth row and here's a little pep talk from their team round eight first one Vegas Played a lot here. It's time to take this thing to the house. I could not agree with you more on that statement right there, buddy. We may not win the championship today, but man, we can make it a lot easier to go there and have a good weekend. So a lot of focus already. Uh, looking forward to Phoenix, and it's so important to start off this round well. Well, a start, a good start is kind of imperative but what he was just talking about what Justin says there is real if you win this race while there are still two other races you're locked in so you have time we make it sound like these teams have endless resource and they do have a lot of resource but where you put that energy and if you know you're locked into Phoenix you can kind of focus purely on that race I think that is a big advantage what junior talked about as far as restart is going to happen here on the first start of the race yeah, in Las Vegas in general, we're, we're looking at three and four up ahead. It's a smoother end of the racetrack. Lower grip, the way the sun kind of beats down on three and four. But they'll drop the green on the front stretch. When they go into one and two, the top of the racetrack, longer distance but smoother. As you go down the banking towards the white line at the bottom, there's more bumps kind of over the tunnel at that end of the racetrack. So we'll see if that becomes an issue on these restarts. It's also very tempting to jump up and make it three wide in turn one, try to pick up as many spots as you can. That part of the racetrack has not been used so far this weekend. Who will be brave enough to try it first? It's Cole Custer and Josh Berry making up row one. Josh Berry on the outside. Cole Custer on the inside as we start off the round of eight from Vegas. Three wide as they go through one and two. Down the Nellis backstretch. And still a fight for the lead. Now Josh Berry on the outside with the momentum. He's going to clear the double zero. You saw how much he desert, you know, disturbed the air of the double zero. Being on the outside made the car very loose. And now you see the damage. Double zero out of the gas. Momentum lost in that 16 of Chandler Smith. We just talked to him on the pace laps. Dominant here in the spring. He moves to second. Still a fight now for the fourth spot as they're side by side. Allgaier with momentum in that seven. He moves up to the back bumper of Daniel Hemrick in the, in the 10. Sammy Smith in the 18. And that car on the bottom, Sammy Smith. The car just does not drive very well with the 10 car on the outside of you. These Xfinity cars, very temperamental to the air. It's hard to drive the car in the corner as deep as you want to. It's hard to get back in the gas because that car is taking the air off yours, taking downforce away. Saw Parker Retzlaff drifting up the racetrack just a bit as the seven really has a lot of momentum. Parker Retzloff in the 31. 
Yeah, in the back of the screen, big move right there. He saw the one car. He's all the way up to eighth. Sam Mayer trying to take that seventh spot away now. He started 14. Oh, already smoke coming out of the 53, and looks like a problem for Patrick Emerling. Yeah, that's right in the middle of the front stretch. You see all the smoke before he hit the outside wall. Yeah, I think that's fluid. the first wall contact, so it looks like a major pressure. a major mechanical issue under the hood, like an oil line has come off, Jeff, or something that tons of oil in his own oil. You see the shine on the right rear tire. He has oil all over the racetrack. So, yeah, oil line off, blown engine, some sort of mechanical issue for sure. There you saw it, the 53. Smoke rolling out the back, and the first caution comes out at Las Vegas. It's for Patrick Emmerling. As it looks like the engine has expired for that team. That means a restart when we return to Vegas. NASCAR Fan Rewards is free to join. You can earn points by watching races or answering trivia, play fantasy, buy race tickets, and more. Save your points. You can trade them in for free tickets, autographed merchandise. There's exclusive gear and a one-of-a-kind race day experiences. So visit NASCAR.com slash Fan Rewards. If you've never been to Vegas, it is definitely an experience. Uh, the new sphere, you see that in the background there. It doesn't look real, but it is. <laughs> I'm staring at my room since I got here. This, <laughs> that crazy guy. Yeah, all the talk about that uh, addition to the Vegas skyline. Kim. Well, John Hunter Nemechek has worked his way up to the 19th position after starting from the back of the field. And this caution plays into exactly what the team wanted. Crew Chief Ben Bayshore told me an early caution would serve us well for two reasons. It wouldn't get the field too strung out, and then it would give John Hunter the opportunity to hopscotch some extra cars with a restart. Right now, they just got to stay ahead of the track, they're telling John Hunter. He said he fired off just a little tight, Marty. Kim Sam Mayer's already gained four positions since the start of the race. Right Right now in the eighth spot and they really felt like the warmer conditions today versus practice and qualifying yesterday are going to play in their hands and they are right so far already almost close to 30 degrees warmer today here in Las Vegas than it was for practice and qualifying Marty Lindley banked on that Sam Mayer counted on it as well so far just a handful of laps in Dave but looking good for the one team Marty yesterday uh, Riley Herbst had a great qualifying run eighth but that was after a little damage in practice so Davin Recibo is a crew chief Davin how hard was the decision to go to the back having to make repairs? Yeah, I mean, we, we had a little bit of damage, and the way the damage was, it made it to where the car uh, wasn't 100% legal to NASCAR standards, so they made they wanted it fixed, so we didn't really have much of a choice. So we fixed it, got it fixed up for them here today, and charged forward. From the back, how is it so far? Uh, so far, it's been pretty good. Um, he's taking it easy a little bit, not giving him 110% just yet, but... So far, it's been it's been pretty good, and balance is okay right now. We'll see where it goes. Got a long race to go. Very good, thank you. And uh, that's an update on the hometown boy, Riley Herbst. Yeah, you mentioned hometown boy. Uh, he's been busy since he's been able to come back. He was out here on Thursday to paint the line pink. That was an event they had here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. They're going pink for National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Riley Herbst, who's a Las Vegas native, as well as the president of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Chris Powell, and South Point GM, Ryan Groney. They joined the American Cancer Society of Nevada to paint the start-finish line pink uh, and black checkers. And also, we saw Tabitha Burton, uh, who gave the command earlier, a uh, breast cancer survivor. Yeah, Marcus Smith, the Smith family, everyone at SMI, such a huge uh, supporter. We see it here. We see it at Charlotte Motor Speedway a week ago at the Roval. So, uh, a shout out to really to that entire organization and what they're willing to do and, and support such a great cause. Bringing awareness. And again, we're under caution. They're doing track cleanup right now. Because of that, the 53 of Patrick Emmerling, the engine blowing up on that one and putting a little oil down on the track. Tonight on NBC and Peacock, Notre Dame football. The Fighting Irish welcome Caleb Williams in the 10th ranked. USC Trojans to South Bend. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's a monster matchup, Rick. Monster matchup. See if Notre Dame can have a little bounce back against USC. Well, a bounce back from a poor qualifying effort. Well, actually, no qualifying effort due to a mechanical issue. Remember, we 
Talk about John Hunter Nemechek starting at the back of the field. And this is what it looks like when you have a good car and you have to make time early. This is three wide. Listen to the spotter. That mid lane is backing up. Two top. Three top. Two. Mid clear. Nice and patient with this pink one here in front. This two top, mid by three behind you. Spotter letting him know Takes which one weakly. he thinks has the momentum, which one doesn't. And then th this is a perfect example right here. John Hunter being patient, nowhere to go. He waits for this to open up. 98 O'Reilly Herbst goes to the bottom. He drives through in the middle. Uh, that gets Green John mid. Hunter all the way up to 19th. So I actually think this yellow is a big opportunity for John Hunter Nemechek. And we're going to see this next restart with this beautiful Toyota on board. I think you're looking at maybe not that many cars. Close you get to the front cars, get a little faster. But I feel very confident, Rick, that stage points, only nine spots in front of him with 36 laps, he has a high chance to get them. And when we talked to him yesterday, he made that comment. He said, I'm going to get up there and get stage points in stage one. So aggressively working his way toward the front, but doing it uh, in a very smart manner. As we get ready for the restart, this time it's Chandler Smith that's on the inside of Josh Berry on the outside and back to racing. Go, go. Nose to tail on that inside line. And that's going to get Chandler Smith out in front of Barry now. And does the field have to worry about this after we saw Chandler Smith lead 118 laps here in the spring? Colleague teammates teamed up on that inside line to do that perfectly. Now Josh Barry trying to get to that outside corner. He can't do it on corner exit here. He tried to get to the outside. Oh, a few cars in the wall there. Yeah, it looked like the 31. Parker Retzloff got right up against the wall. Chandler Smith took the lead on the bottom. Josh Berry using the second lane, trying to get some momentum built up for straightaway speed, up the racetrack a little bit. Here comes Cole Custer in the double zero, closing the gap now on second. Yeah, Josh going to have to get a little defensive, not worry about the lead now, try to focus on keeping that double zero car behind him. Yellow, Carson's yellow, come yellow, back out again. One. Big contact here with the outside wall for the uh, 38 car. Joe Graff Jr., a uh, lot of damage. And that was just on the exit of turn on. four. I'm wondering what contact might have happened to make that car get into the fence like that. It's with the radio communication. Seems to maybe have had a disagreement with another driver on the racetrack. He was running 30th. What is the 25 doing? Okay. And he's calling out the Brent Moffitt driven number 25. Moffitt hit the wall. Yeah, Moffitt just gets up the racetrack, gets into the fence. He has to come out of the gas, right? To try to lessen the impact, slow the car down. And the impact of him hitting the wall slows the car down as well. And Joe just had nowhere to go, runs in the back runs in the left rear quarter panel of the 25 car. I'm sure that Moffitt certainly didn't want to get anybody else mixed up in his mistake. You see the AMR crew tending to the driver, the 38. So Joe Graff Jr. brings out the second caution of the day at Vegas, only 13 laps in to stage one. A little contact with the wall for Brett Moffitt and the 38 checks up goes around and also heavy contact with the outside wall. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Whoever can get the job done, whoever can win, is going to be the one to make it to that final four. If we can get there, then we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And winning the championship is everything at this level. There would be nothing cooler than to stand on that stage at Phoenix. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs from Las Vegas. It's the Alsco uniforms 302. Big announcement for the 96 driver uh, just recently. Excuse me, 92 driver, Kim. 
Yeah, Josh Williams, we know what a champion for children he is. He makes children's hospital visits in every local market. He visits a across the season but this week he and his wife Trey Ray announced they will be expecting a baby girl in March of 2024 you see the video there they ate the cupcake there was pink icing in the inside so we will be welcoming a new member to the NASCAR family come next spring I talked with Josh this morning in the garage he had a huge smile on his face and he just said I had to give you guys something to talk about so again March 2024 we look forward to welcoming Josh and Trey Ray's new baby girl Exciting news there for that young couple. Again, Josh, the driver of the 92, 30 uh, year old out of Port Charlotte, Florida. I think Josh jumped onto the scene uh, when he parked the car uh, right at the start finish line and then walked back <laughs> into the garage after NASCAR told him to park it. Uh, that made news for the driver of the 92. And with more on Sam Mayer, let's go to Marty. Rick, the first run of the day to the number, caution number one for Sam Mayer, pretty good. The second run of the day, not so much. Listen in. Yeah, I guess that's the biggest thing, protecting that rear rear. Stability, like I can't, like if someone drives to my inside, it's almost like I can't even defend it. I'm just kind of like in my old no man's land right here. It'll come around, bud, I promise you. You'll be screaming snug before you know it. That's funny, Steve. Marty Lindley kind of chime into his young driver. You got to trust me here a little bit. And he, the, the point behind that is with all these cautions, really going to change the way these cars handle the further they go through these runs. These heat cycles on the tire, Steve, that does change the way a car will handle on the track. Yeah, I mean, basically, you run under green, the tire gets all the way up to temperature, and then ride around in the yellow, they cool off. And every time they do that, it really changes the aero balance. But I agree with the uh, crew chief of the one. I think overall, these cars are going to build tight, making the front ends not quite as positive as they want through the middle of the corner. We talked earlier about Parker Ritzclaff in the 31 car. Great qualifying effort. Fifth place. May have made some contact. Let's take a look. Ritzlaff is doing some good work in this car over the last several weeks. That's pretty light contact. I mean, these cars are pretty tough. We're going to see them do much more than that next week at Homestead. So hopefully I believe he'll be okay and be able to continue on. How many laps are we going to see before they get closer to the wall here? Yeah, I think around lap 19 or 20 is when the field was starting to use the top of the racetrack in turn three and four in the last race here. So. That's what I would be looking for. And turn three and four is where they tend to go to the wall um, soonest because it is the end of the track with less grip. It's in the sun throughout the day longer. It's bleached out and more. It's a little bit slicker than the other end of the racetrack in turn one and two. Dave, how about the driver who's running fourth right now, Daniel Hemrick? He actually chooses inside row two, Rick, for this restart. That's Daniel Hemrick now eliminated from the playoffs, but just by two points. Remember the finish last week? It was so incredible. After Sam Mayer dominated the day, Daniel Hemrick tried his best to win this right here, this race to the line. That would have at least tied him and put him through with the tiebreaker. That 10 car worked hard. When I talked to Daniel this weekend, you could just sense a little bit of sadness, but also a little bit of relief. Four races to go. They feel like they can win together. Remember, his set his sights are set on the Cup Series next year. So there's just a feeling that Hemrick can go out there and do something, getting to victory lane with four races here yet to go. And you remember Daniel Hemrick when he won his championship, it was his first career win in any of the top three series. And it happened in the final turns of the track at Phoenix to get that win. You're talking about how this track changes. Remember the 16 car Chandler Smith, he got the lead from Josh Berry on the bottom. But he took the top on this restart because he believes on a little bit older tire, a little bit hotter racetrack, you're going to be better off and be able to be in the throttle more on the outside than you what you were earlier in the run, earlier in the day. Coming back to the restart zone, this time Chandler Smith is going to be on the outside, Josh Berry on the inside as they get back to the gas. like Daniel Hemrick fell back to the nose of the seven of Allgaier that checked up that inside line. See that outside at the front row, it worked. Chandler Smith's idea about being able to use that outside, also the double zero of Cole Custer, both were able to get by the eight of Barry.
Sheldon Creed using that high side to the extreme and down in turn one and two and continues to do it. Jumps to the outside here in the tri-oval. It's gonna be three wide down here to turn one. Made up several spots on this restart using that third groove. That's well, tight right there off a of turn two down the back straight away. The opposite approach, Austin Hill, the 21 car, he just went to the bottom and got two spots on that restart running the very bottom of the racetrack. Sheldon Creed seeing the advantage of that momentum. Creed in the two using the higher line through three and four and immediately got to the back bumper of Parker Retzlaff. Out through the middle almost considering going to the middle right there around Parker. He's going to fall in line to the bottom or now to the middle of the racetrack. The 31 slides up the racetrack a little bit. Sheldon Creed looking pretty aggressive right here early in this race. It's what he's going to have to do to make a statement in these playoffs. Now on the bottom, but still moving forward. He's going to clear the 31 of Retzloff. I was impressed by that because the 31 was rather tight on his door, a situation that usually is bad for the inside car, but he was able to throttle up and drive out of that situation to be able to put the side force back on the number two car and take the spot. 31 didn't have the speed it needs in the, in the middle of the corner. I don't know if a little bit of damage got into the wall, a little bit of right front fender damage, maybe a little bit of suspension damage. He just does not roll the center of the corner. So when you see that, you have to attack him. And there's John Hunter Nemechek continuing his drive through the field. This car is dominant. Look at him drive up and move the two aerodynamically up off the bottom of the racetrack. He gets to the back bumper of that two car. And they have, the two car has to lift, chase the car off the racetrack. The 20 turning down low underneath, not bothered by the dirty air on the nose, able to make the pass. Inside the top 10, so Nemechek, he called his shot yesterday. He said he'd be inside the top 10, be able to get playoff, or excuse me, stage points at the end of stage one and already up to eighth. It's a good battle right here. The nine car and the 11. Lane, Lane Riggs. Riggs. Yeah, Lane Riggs driving that 11 car. Really good late model racer. Won a lot of short track races. Trying to get himself in this Xfinity series, he'd be a great little driver for somebody to latch on to. A lot of promise. Ton of success in the Cars Tour Series, national champion at the late mile stock level, and he's got a few opportunities at the end of this year driving this college car. He wants to make the most of those and do the best he can. Wants a great finish today, Dave. One more race to go after this, Junior, at a track he's really good at in a late model. That is Martinsville. Talk to Lane just before driver intro today. The weekend has gone much better than it did at Texas, his first race where he crashed in practice. His dad, Scott, told me when he went on the track for practice, he had, he had tears in his eyes because he was finally racing the Xfinity Series, and he said those led to tears in his eyes after he put it in the wall in practice. Two separate emotions there to start his uh, weekend in Texas, but much better this weekend and another fast 11 car. Spoke with Scott uh, yesterday after practicing qualifying. He says every lap he turns, he's learning. And that's the thing that his dad was proud about. He said he's learning every time he goes out on the racetrack. So uh, a lot of high praise from his father. Josh Berry getting passed right here by Sammy Smith. Pretty impressive run by the 18 car, Sammy Smith, who's had an up and down year. Started off hot, running with good speed early, but the majority of this season, they've sort of struggled really to put together races and uh, crashed a lot of cars. Now he's trying to figure out how to finish these races and so far getting off to a great start here in Las Vegas in the top three. Well, it cleaned up the last three races, really cleaned up, you know, those mistakes. And I think that's key for this driver. Steve is a young driver with a lot of promise, but you just cannot continue damaging cars. It not only affects that race, but also the race after because your preparation level, oh, contact right there. Your prep level, see, when you start wrecking race cars, really gets hurt. Yeah, everything gets behind. And speaking of get behind, the 11 was almost behind on the steering. You want to make sure you leave a lane there. He <laughs> kind of shut that door on the 48 who had a run. Parker gave him a little shot in that right rear bumper. Lane's going to learn something right here, though, about Mile and a half multi-groove racetracks. He's going to watch those guys running the top. You see the contact right there. Lane just not quite clear, trying to come up the racetrack, almost giving a little nose out there for the 48 of Parker. But he's going to watch these guys run the top and go, man, how do I do that? Never has he ever had a been, had been in a situation to go up and run against the fence at a track like this. We see a lot of positions changing hands right here. Looks like. John Nemechek trying to drive through, almost into the left rear quarter panel of the seven car. And if you're if you're Justin Algar, if you're 
you know, Josh Berry. Here's the 20 car, started dead last. I mean, we're 20 late at 28 laps into the race with two cautions, and he's passing me. I mean, that is, it, it just rips your heart out how much faster he is than you are right now. Marty. So Jeff can restart here at Vegas be frustrating. Let's get Justin Allgaier's take on that. Listen in. Freaking nervous, too, because the pin can't restart. My goodness. Yeah, we all saw it now. Gather it back in. Let's go. So he's very impressed with what Daniel Hemrick did on that last restart. But Junior, you talked about in the pre-race. Restart to Vegas are everything. Well, I think... You know, what he's worried about is the 10 had a ch uh, missed a shift. Something happened to the 10 right here. And watch the 7 run right in the back of him. Almost knocked the front bumper bar out of the 7 car. And it could have unsealed some of that duck work, changing the aerodynamics, the downforce, the ability to cool um, as well as it needs to. So certainly con some, some concerns for the 7 car going forward. And a frustrated Allgaier on the radio letting his team know it's Chandler Smith out in front with Cole Custer running second. Ma, are you sure you don't want to go bowling with us tonight? Yeah, no. There's my little marzipan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my daughter gives the best hugs. <laughs> We're just passing through on our way to the Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> and we wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are exactly like me. I know, right? <laughs> well, cherish your friends and loved ones. Let's roll, daddy-o. <laughs> Let's boogie-woogie. Looks like you got a corner office. Lucky. Be part of something greater. Some days, I don't have time to slow down. So sipping on coffee just isn't an option. That's when I turn to five-hour energy. It's my five-second coffee. Discover five-hour energy. Some days, I don't have time to slow down. So sipping on coffee just isn't an option. That's when I turn to five-hour energy. It's my five-second coffee. Discover five-hour energy. When it comes to the wrong mattress, you snooze, you lose. At Ashley, we've got you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices. And you can snooze now and pay later with 0% interest for 60 months. Make every snooze count. Shop in-store or online today. I'm all about fall, especially this new pumpkin spice frosty. Yeah, after it. So I'm taking some me time out here. Question for you. So, fries or a utensil, right? Good question. It is a good question. Can you give us an answer? It? Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new pumpkin spice frosty or cold brew. Hours of love from you. All the right parts from us. With eBay Guaranteed Fit. Grandfather clock is counting down to more than just a winner. Drama is building. It's the final chance for a driver to make it to the championship four. And for a fan to catch all the drama. Chastain gets it right back to Hamlin in turn two. At the short track in NASCAR. He'll score the win. Chastain did a video game. It move. all comes down to Martinsville. And the whole family's invited. Hell yeah. Let's go get a championship. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Great battle for the lead. On the outside, Cole Custer with the momentum is going to take the top spot away from the 16 of Chandler Smith. Yeah, Cole Custer got some information from the spotter. I'm sure that people were starting to run the top in three and four. He jumped up there, got big momentum, got underneath, and was able to make the pass. And then Chandler Smith put up a big battle trying to get it back, but it has shifted. The fast way around this racetrack has gone to the top in three and four. A lot of guys run the top in one and two as well. Is this a precursor to what we're going to see at Homestead Miami next week? Right uh, up against the wall? Yeah, but from lap one. <laughs> yeah. up there right off the start. Cole Custer now starting to put a few more cars a lap down. Yeah. 
Playoff drivers first, second, third, fifth, sixth, seventh. Sheldon Creed in 10th. And the one of Sam Mayer all the way back in 16th as we see a battle here between the 8 and the 48. I say that because we're closing in eight laps away from the end of the stage. So, uh, you know, in the round of eight, you would really think you need to finish inside the points probably in every stage if you're going to be one of those drivers that point your way to Phoenix. This is interesting right here. We saw that 20 car, John Hunter Nemechek, just seemingly driving through the field with ease. But right here, uh, Justin Algar has been able to sort of keep him within distance. And, he, and, and John Hunter has not been able to close the gap on the car in front of him, Austin Hill in the 21. So while we did see this car drive through the field, we always note that these cars in that top five, they're going to get harder and harder to pass. They're going to race you harder because they expect to beat you. Kim. And maybe the balance of that 20 car going a little bit away for John Hunter. He was reporting I'm a little tight, sliding the rears on exit, but already outperforming what they were expecting. Crew chief Ben Bayshore said they hope to be top 10 by the end of stage one, top five by the end of stage two. Right now they're in the sixth position, one step away, Dave, from where they wanted to be at the end of stage two. Pole sitter Josh Berry is going the wrong direction, Kim, from the first starting spot back to ninth at this point. On lap 25, he said it was a little free on entry. By lap 29, he said it was free everywhere team told him stand by a few laps we'll fix you up Marty boy Dave at the beginning of the run we really bragged on Sam Mayer but now he is the lowest playoff running driver in 15th the back half of the run has just not been good so Jeff the undrivable part is that the car is so free especially on entry how does that complicate things here at Vegas well so the problem already on corner entry is if you're loose, you just cannot carry any speed. And now when you get to the middle the corner, you're going too, so slow that you got to start trying to go the throttle quicker to make lap time. And it's just so difficult to drive a car with loose entry conditions on a mile and a half. And that's been this team's issues. They have not been very good on mile and a half this year. They're going to have to fix it because you got one today and you've got one next week. You're going to have to find a way to turn it around back from John Hunter Nemechek's Toyota on board as he looks back on Justin Allgaier. The Nemechek starting at the back of the field has made his way to sixth and plateaued there as he's about nine tenths of a second behind Austin Hill. Under three laps to go Cole Custer Chandler Smith Sammy Smith Daniel Hemrick and Austin Hill the top five Custer right up against the wall through three and four. They're right behind them. Uh, maybe a battle for position for second there, Chandler Smith. Sammy Smith has ran him down. A little traffic right there in front of him. As we watch these last couple of laps, opportunity for Sammy maybe to gain another point in this stage. A two-point shift if he can get by him, taking that one spot away from Chandler Smith and gaining the spot. As they come up on one to go and the momentum and the outside line for Sammy Smith. He's trying to use it. Can he get to his outside? Not quite. Saw him rush the gas there and try to get to the outside. He was able to do it, but then not finish the corner. 16 was very patient back to the throttle. They will clear him. And now the 16 driving a little defensive up off the bottom of the racetrack, not allowing him to have that run on the high side. A lot of traffic in front of him, though, down here for three and four. And that's for second. Chandler Smith, Sammy Smith. Out in front and right up against the wall, the double zero of Cole Custer looking for his seventh stage win of the year. And this will be his second one that he's been able to claim from Las Vegas. Chandler Smith, Sammy Smith, second, third, Daniel Hemrick, Austin Hill, John Hunter Nemechek, Allgaier, Brandon Jones, Kligerman, and Riley Herbst all gaining points in stage one. Josh Berry started out front, but it was a hard charging John Hunter Nemechek that gained a lot of spots. But in the end, Cole Custer wins stage one. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. 
beautiful scenery here in the Las Vegas area. Again, Nellis Air Force Base located just off the back stretch here in Las Vegas, which we see fighter jets flying by on a regular basis. A lot of speed on the racetrack, especially for the driver of the double zero, Cole Custer. He's going to lead the field onto pit road for the start of pit stops. Kim? And Chandler Smith, top of your screen, said he needs more turns, specifically the longevity of the front of the car through the run. He also said it just feels unstable. They will make an air pressure adjustment on those four fresh Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel in that car, Dave. Eight stage points for Sammy Smith. That's good. What wasn't good was near the end of the run. The car went a little bit tight. He needs adjustment for that, Marty. Cole Custer was so impressive, Dave, especially on the longer run. He said it fades a little bit free, but he never lost the center turn for the double zero car. He said if you make us and make a change make it a very small change kind of a long stop for the double zero we'll see if that costs him any track position it does not rick they come in with the lead they leave with the lead great stop for the double zero team sammy smith and him right gaining a couple spots chandler smith losing two on pit road we'll see if he can gain him back on the racetrack here's how you start the playoffs boys How cool is it that I got the battle with the boss man, Dale Jr.? Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to lead the lap, and the crowd goes wild. We had a shot at winning it if the car was going to run good at the end. I'm on fire, boy. There's smoke in the right side of the car. I had a blast. Justin wins. It makes me want to do more, so I'll have some fun homestead riding the fence. It's Bristol, baby. Let's go! And again, that's next Saturday on USA. The NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs will continue. Homestead Miami Speedway. It's another chance to secure a spot in the championship four. Uh, that race coverage will start at 3 p.m. Eastern and will only be a three man booth because Junior back behind the wheel. Make sure that no fires this time. Yeah, same same race car. We rebuilt it, fixed our bugs, so we'll have a lot of fun. It's, hopefully, we get up there, run the wall, have a good night. Such a fun racetrack, such a great place to race at Homestead, Florida. First pit stop, we talk about mistakes that can happen on the racetrack that can also happen on pit road. The 18 of Sammy Smith, clean right side stop, nice job. They look slow because five lug nuts compared to the cup car, but then watch the left front. You're going to see the tire come off quickly and the exchange a little bit messy, took a little bit of time to index it, but then look, as the jack drops, the tire changer still working. Lug nuts not secure, so they came back down pit road and added the unsecured lug nuts, and for that reason, Sammy Smith is at the tail of the field. We saw John Hunter Nemechek, his teammate, recover early, but now Sammy Smith has work to do. Uh, playoff driver currently outside the top 25. And the 48 and 74 both had uncontrolled tires. As we look at stage points earned, Cole Custer, that's also with the win, that's a playoff point that he will get and can uh, count on that. Actually won't need it though when we get to Phoenix. Points go out the window as far as what he is going to be doing for a championship. Kim. And actually a litany of problems for the 48 of Parker Kligerman. You mentioned the uncontrolled tire. Not only that, they took Packer out of the left front on the initial stop. Well, they took too much. So Parker, when they came back down, had to put Packer back in the left front. On top of that, they're not operating with their regular pit crew over the wall. Another team on an affiliate team had a jackman that got injured, so they don't have their regular jackman. There was some switching, too, with the tire changer. So just missing a little bit on their regular choreography for Parker Kligerman's team. That can happen. So, you know, you reach in there on a pit stop. The packer is basically the shim and the shock that keeps the height the right side. You can grab more than one handle in a hurry. So, as we get ready to see the restart and getting underway with stage two, we're going to ride along with the circle.com on board of Raja Karuth. Raja restarting in the 18th position. Green, 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 green. But they're pushing up the top. We're going to have it in front of the 29. Half off the 51. Yep. Still okay. 51 stayed left. Tight right. Tight. Clear up. Inside. Inside. 26 left. A lot of momentum out the front. Just stayed with the block low. Bottom, 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 bottom. Yeah, getting line with the 51. All two by twos are just two lanes up. Half off you. 
Middle still clear, clear all the way. Everything you need on exit, whatever you need, all clear. And a lot of smoke right in front of Raja. Looks like an engine gave away and caution has come out. The 45 doesn't have a right rear tire. Yeah, he had some contact with the car with the blown engine crossed in front of him. He turns sideways in the oil, makes contact with the right side into the blown engine. And everyone else hits that fluid and it's like ice, no control. Everybody up into the fence. We were riding along with Raja Karuth with that circle.com on board. Uh, the 26 there. That's Kaz Grala, who's had, I believe, the one with the engine problem. You hear the tire is whipping around. What Roger has to do here is just go as slowly as he can so that tire doesn't continue to come apart and just he can just rip the body completely off the car. Do suspension damage. You can see all the debris flying inside of the car. That's tire fabric as the tire is coming apart. There you go. It'll rip that whole inner panel out or rip the whole outside quarter panel do a massive amount of damage. And if that's the left rear tire, like that's right behind the driver. Yeah. If, if that's the right rear, but if it's the left rear, that's just how wild and dangerous this sport is. And again, Raja Karud, uh, we were riding along with him, the car in front of him. 26 of Kazgrala, we watch it as the engine expires there and right up in front of him, all that fluid. And you saw it on the camera too. As soon as the car rolled in front of him with the oil coming out, around he went. There's absolutely nothing you can do in that situation, just bad timing. Park all these Ligerman. people, yeah, all these guys, just wrong place, wrong time. Ah, oh, look at all the oil. Yeah. Just hard hits. Fortunately, it could, you know, those wreck, that wreck that early after a restart could have been a lot worse, taking even more cars out. Red flag has come out as they're going to have to go to work on cleaning the racetrack up from the fluid that been, has been put down and getting the cars off of the track and back into the infield and the garage. So caution number four out here at Las Vegas. Red flag condition here in the Xfinity Series playoff race from Las Vegas Motor Speedway as oil put on the track by Kaz Grala and quite a few cars involved in the incident. Dave, one that maybe snuck through the 18. Woohoo, Sammy Smith, playoff driver. Remember restarting in the back of the pack, 28th to be exact, as that was getting uh, taking place in front of him. Listen to his spotter trying to guide him through. He's on the low side in the 18 car. Outside 48, that's it. Yeah, we're blowing up good. Get to the middle, get to the middle. Get down low, 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 lower, 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 lower. Get down on the apron. Yep, all the way down here, all the way down. We got one spinning, though. Watch the one spinning. Either direction, you got whatever you need here. So drivers, I don't know how much you actually, uh, you know, use from your spotter in those situations, but boy, they sure are trying to help you a ton. You want everything you can get. That information about where to go. So we, you know, we, we can see there's a crash, but helping you understand, do I need to follow the smoke? Because they can't see the cars. They just see nothing but smoke. Are the cars coming down the track? Are they starting to slide down the track? Is there going to be an option for me to opening up, up high? Or are they going to stay up there? It is my only option, the bottom of the racetrack. That's what I always liked, Jeff, was like, tell tell me about the wreck. Yeah, but I want to know left, right. Tell me where to go. It, it's a lot of responsibility on the on the, on the the spotter, you know, but ultimately the driver's got to make that decision. But there's times the driver has no idea. He can't see. There's smoke. He can see cars spinning in front of him, but he doesn't know what's in front of that, that mess. So the, the spotters are just so valuable. They do such a great job. And it's, I mean, they're up here. Think about this. They... They started this morning. You know, they were cup practice, cup qualifying. They were up there. They spend all day on top of these buildings. Do great work. 
Let's see if we can chat with the race leader, Cole Custer, while we're under this red flag condition. I'm going to try to get him here. Hey, Cole, it's the guys in the NBC booth. You got a copy? Yep, I got you. Well, I'm not going to go ask how it's going because with the stage win and 19 laps led, it looks like it's, gonna, it's going pretty good. So let's ask about the racetrack. Is it what you expected with the temperature change from yesterday? I mean, it's definitely slick. You know, just always when we come here the second time, you know, it's hotter, it's slicker. The track baked all summer. So, you know, it's definitely nobody's car drives good today, I would say, you know, and the bumps feel you know, pretty rigid and everything. But I feel like JT and our guys did a great job with it, making it. Um, not handle handle the best out of everybody, I would say. So hopefully we can uh, keep it up here and keep up with it and be there then. Let's talk about this race from the driver's seat. I know for the fans, you know, we've already had four cautions and 18 laps of yellow. We've seen blown engines, oil on the racetrack, a ton of speedy dry going down. Is that very disruptive from behind the wheel? I mean, overall, it just makes it the restarts, you know, super tough. You know, I mean, I think it's it's always a toss up on the front row of who's going to get the better push and. Um, you know, we, were, we made it happen that last time, but you just never know how the restart's going to work out, so you kind of have to take it as it comes and uh, try and make the most of it. All right, man. Well, still got 36 to go in the second stage. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Pretty cool to talk to a driver in the race. I, mean, I know it's on a red flag, but, like, I mean, this is, this is like talking to a quarterback at halftime, right? I mean, uh, so great that these drivers will take the time and give us some insight on what they're feeling. You see the team there waiting as soon as the red flag is taken away and the yellow flag is displayed, they will be able to start working on the car. We can't work on it under red flag condition. This is what Raja had to see. The oil being laid down right in front of him. And again, a reminder, Petit Lama is going on right now from Road Atlanta. You can see it on Peacock and then at the conclusion of the Xfinity Series race, it will be on USA. Uh, Lee Diffie on the call there. It's the last race for the IMSA Racing Series. There's a six-way battle going on right now in the GTP championship run. Uh, a couple Penske entries in that. So a uh, great battle that's taking place again on that 10-hour race from Petit Moma, and it starts under the sun and then ends under uh, night sky. So a great race, a great endurance race there at Road Atlanta. Caution has come back out now, so the red flag has gone away. They'll start going to work on the teams uh, that were on pit road, uh, one of those being Raja Karuth, doing some work on that car. And they'll send him back out onto the racetrack. And the trouble for that is they've got no crush panel in this car right here, so all kinds of debris, heat, um, you know, carbon monoxide, all sorts of things are going to be coming inside of the cockpit for Rajah the rest of the day. Yeah, that right rear one is a is a real bad one to to you know to lose because normally right here this would be boxed in with another piece of metal, uh, so you wouldn't be able to see any of that right there and. I say it's the worst one because the exhaust is right there in front of that opening. So you mentioned the carbon monoxide, Dale, right? It's going to kind of want to fill into the back of the car. We see the 21 of Austin Hill pit from six, Dave. This seems a little odd. Uh, Steve, second playoff driver with lug nuts missing or not tight. The left rear, he is sure, is the problem with the huge vibration he's getting as he speeds around this mile and a half track. So the team has talked about just changing the left side tires. Remember, they're limited on sets of tires here in the Xfinity Series uh, today. So they're going to take a look at that, see if there's any other damage there. But he had to come to pit road. So I, I'd be shocked if they changed the tire. It seems like they're ticking the tire off, probably inspecting the threads. Because if the tire was loose, you could damage the, the studs, where then any tire you put on wouldn't become tight. Um, if you're going to take the time, let's make the repair one time and one time only. So they go to work on the 21. Austin Hill, he's going to have to restart in the back. Getting ready for the restart. Again, after Cash Grala had an engine expire on him and oil down on the racetrack. Red flag came out, cleaned the racetrack off, and now 
getting ready for the restart. Well, you heard Cole Custer talk about it. You know, the stop and go wasn't the big issue. It's the restarts and the challenge. And one challenge he has, the inside is going to be a pair of collar cars. So you assume they're going to work together and try to really help each other down the front stretch. Now, the good news for Cole Custer um, is the double zero. So I think he's going to have a lot of help through the restart zone. The question is, in the turn one, guys, if the uh, 20 car will stay committed to the double zero or if he'll have the opportunity uh, to try to find a three wide situation. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Nemechek's willing to get that aggressive. Will he jump up there three wide? I think he's accomplished a lot of what he wanted to accomplish. Now he has track position. He talked before the race about being smart, leaving this race with great points. And I think that now with this track position, although we all know John Hunter, he does only knows one speed wide open. I think he'll be very selective in the move he makes. John Hunter Nemechek will restart in row two, just behind Cole Custer. And we'll see if the momentum works for him on the high side. The pace car off the track, field back in the hands of Cole Custer. Custer hasn't been able to clear the 10 of Daniel Hemrick. Here comes John Hunter Nemechek on the bottom of the racetrack. Now the momentum paying off for Cole Custer in the double zero. Great restart for Hemrick. He didn't get the lead, but came out in second place. Did a good job. The loser in all that was Chandler Smith. Chandler picked behind Hemrick. On that inside line, and he's back to fifth right now with more cars on the outside trying to get by him. He rolls in behind the 98 of Herbs. Big pass there for John Hunter. Nemechek gets by the 10 of Hemrick. Oh, Hemrick had to jump out of the gas right there. His car got a little bit upset by the seven car getting to his left rear quarter panel. Remember right. this 98 car, he started in the back as well, so he's done a good job of climbing up through the field the same as John Hunter. Now Hemrick able to get back, goes by that 98. Big run from Josh Berry here down the back straight away to the inside of Chandler Smith as well. Riley Herbst in the 98 being a Las Vegas native has 50 or 60 family members and friends that have come out here to the track to cheer him on. Riley still looking for that first win in the Xfinity Series. There's Sam Mayer in the one behind Sammy Smith in that 18. And a big wiggle there as Mayer got up to the back bumper of Smith, maybe affected the air a bit. They're three wide right behind them. That 21 of Austin Hill we saw make the extra pit stop to put some lug nuts on, trying to recover. He's back up to 17. Parker and Parker down the back straightaway. Sounds like a law firm. Yeah. Here's the yeah, here's the moment for this 18 car. He gets a little loose, just in a bad position. I think that the one affects it a little bit, but also the side force going away as the 11's out there. He's just trying hard to go through throttle and maintain right there and asking too much of the rear tires and lateral grip. Brandon Jones in the nine, just in front of Ryan Sieg in that 39. Sieg's had some good runs here at Vegas. Not a surprise to see this 39 car running in the top 10. Small team works hard, but they have their moments and they really try to highlight or prepare their best when they know they can go to these racetracks and compete. And Vegas is on that schedule. Ryan, another one of those drivers searching for their first win in the Xfinity Series. Dave. Saw Ryan Sieg at driver intros. I said, you ready to go? He said, yeah, always. But he was a little disappointed in his qualifying effort, 17th for the driver of the 39 car, but he's worked his way forward, as you can see. 
Yeah, up into the top 10 now running in that 10th spot. Watching the top of the screen, the 98 of Herps working the high side trying to create that momentum. You see it work down the back straightaway as he closes in on the 10 of Hemrick. Just slightly offset here in three and four, watching the back of that 98 move around. And you may be asking, why is it the 98 higher in three and four? We saw guys earlier in the race running higher. Well, it's simply because the tires are still new and they have a lot of grip. So the shortest way around the racetrack is the way to go. The top gets better when the tires start to wear out. The speed starts to come out of them. Then you start looking for different places to run. The other thing too, is we had that big crash down in turn one and two and they put a bunch of speedy dry on the racetrack and yes we're starting to clean that bottom groove that second groove that third groove but all of that stuff you're cleaning goes somewhere and it goes to the top of the racetrack and that that top groove will take a long time for them to really move that cushion up down there in one and two and really get that track widened back out oh Ooh. hammer got loose right there five five. clear clear that's that's just a skill that the drivers have a tool in their toolbox you see a guy struggling a little bit, you get right behind him, pull the air off the car, makes him loose. I've seen that forever in this series. So he turns a little bit before him or gets underneath him. Now he stacks that air up underneath him and it just makes his car where he cannot get back to the bottom. This was off turn four a few moments ago. A little battle right here. Riggs wasn't real sure which lane he needed to be in. Sammy Smith trying to get by. Myatt Snyder in the 19 car. Sammy has a fast car in that 18 and just getting up there, getting behind people and, and just trying to be patient, but also at the same time, it's disrupting the air on their car and making those passes relatively easy. We saw the same thing out of his teammate, John Hunter Nemechek, when he came through the back of the field. What you got, Dave? Well, Dale Jr., I know you know this. When you have a young driver who sees tracks for the first time in any series, um, they're not necessarily going to be their best effort. So they saw this track in March. Sammy told me this afternoon that the car was good, but it was much better the second time now that I've been here. And uh, th those extra laps sure help, Marty. Welcome to the top 10, Sam Mayer, finally coming to life here in the second half of this stage two. What did Marty Lindley do on the last stop? Listen in. What adjustments did we make here? Like how much? We did a bunch of air pressure, three corners, and we worked on the right wrist shot. And they have responded with some speed here in this run. Now up to the ninth position for Sam Mayer, Rick. Sammy Smith also making the move. See him go by Ryan C. And Sheldon Creed, we saw him be very aggressive in the first stage. Uh, he is running in the 10th spot right now. It's Cole Custer out in front. He's already read, led 36 laps here at Las Vegas today. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Four finalists will win a trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway, with the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Here they are, the eight semifinalists for the million-dollar prize. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR, and home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers across the country, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to be the fuel that keeps you firing on all cylinders. Right now at Napa, get a five-quart jug of Napa Full Synthetic Motor Oil for only $19.99. Or claim a prepaid $5 Visa card when you buy any Napa Gold Air Filter or Napa EnviroShield Cabin Air Filter. Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some Tay-Tays. Eggman and Saucy Boy. Two hot coffees. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar piggy bundles. Time to meet your team. Who wants to race? 
be part of something greater. When it comes to the wrong mattress, you snooze, you lose. At Ashley, we've got you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices. And you can snooze now and pay later with 0% interest for 60 months. Make every snooze count. Shop in-store or online today. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Whatever got you this far wasn't luck. It was work, struggle, sacrifice, ambition that burned like pure fire. So what do you say, fellas? Like your odds? NASCAR playoffs continue at Las Vegas on NBC. Represent your favorite driver during the playoffs and take advantage of amazing deals at the NASCAR shop. Check out the greatest selection of T-shirts, hats, die casts, and much, much more. All you have to do is visit NASCAR.com slash shop. Still up front, it's Cole Custer, but for how long is the question now as John Hunter Nemechek has closed the gap just three-tenths of a second separating the top two? This right here is what I thought we were going to see all season long during the Xfinity year is the double zero Cole Custer and John Hunter Nemechek out in front of the field battling between each other for wins. But John Hunter's had some pretty good pace, but he's not really been able to close the gap on the double zero. Custer's running different lines. Top down here against the wall. Really, really loose, but hung out and fast right against the wall. John Hunter has to fade down just a little bit to get a little clean air on the left front. Can't run right up against the wall, so they're giving up just maybe a little bit of time there in three and four. Do you see the differences? The double zero drives away now down in one and two. Custer and John Hunter, and we check both want the middle of the racetrack as we watch this battle for 10. These two have been fighting for probably 10, 15 laps for this one position. And yeah, this is a little bit of the, just the inexperience, in my opinion, of, of Sammy Smith. Guy's got a very fast race car, but he's trying to make this pass on the bottom. And the two is smart enough, Preet smart enough to really use the top of the racetrack to make that almost a difficult thing to do. See the two back up the entry, but he powers up right here. Now finally the 18's through. He backed up the entry a lot that time. He had some kind of an issue in the turn three. When Sammy turned underneath him, he was already past him. So something happened with the two car right there. And that's been their struggle really, long run speed. That's interesting right there on the top of the screen, the seven running the bottom of the straightaway. Down the back straightaway, I don't know if he just assumes it's 98's way fast, he's coming by, I'm gonna let him go. Or is the seven having a problem, Marty? Not having a problem, Junior, but he is frustrated. Listen to the radio. Struggling with how hard to go in here. I hate that they're driving away and the 98's catching me, but I'm just brutalizing this right front if I don't. Yeah, I know you're doing the right thing, man. We need to save the right front this spin. Before I still have nothing to lean on with the right rear, that's the problem. Yeah, so Junior, he brings up the point. Feels like he can't push the car as hard as he wants. That's why he lost the third spot there to Riley Herbst. And we, you know, I know you, Marty, you and Steve were talking about some tire issues on that seven car. The, car, the tires that came off after stage one, a little cording, a little chunking on the right front, cording on the left front. So the team sounds concerned about the longevity of these tires throughout this run with nine laps to go. Maybe a little concern and also a little understanding of where they are, right? They came in 17 points above the cut line. Uh, they finished seventh in the first stage. So kind of like we talked about Junior at the beginning as we see a little shove from Creed uh, to Myatt Snyder. Creed saying, hey, man, I'm running the top. I got a little more speed. Why don't you give me a little room on exit? But I think the seven just says, look, you're doing the right thing. You heard Jim Pullman tell him, we just don't want to have a big mistake here. So don't worry about letting a guy go. I appreciate you understanding. It. Kim, how about the two of Sheldon Creed? Yeah, he continues to drop further from the top 10, currently running in the 13th position and came on the radio just a second ago. I wouldn't call it frantic, but in definitely a concerned voice saying he's just losing right rear grip, he can't turn the wheel, and he's struggling to get in the throttle. So that car just not good on the long green flag runs for Sheldon Creed. He's been running to the top, but trying to find something. Went back to the bottom in three and four. He's trying to find something that makes his car drive a little bit better. As a driver, that's, you know, you have the car you have. They can't fix it right now. So you've got to make adjustments. You've got to try something different. 
because we he lost a ton of track position just in the last seven or eight laps. Keep doing the same thing, you'll get the same result. As we see the leaders here almost in a, in a tight battle for that position, the car behind them, that black number 98 of Herbst that just passed the seven of Algar for third, is closing in on this lead, lead battle. I know Riley Herbst, not in the points championship battle, would love to be. Feels like he's good enough. They announced just this past week that he'll be returning to this 98 car. I was surprised, but I like the move. I think the kid has improved so much this year. And now look at him closing in on the two fastest cars in the field. This battle for the lead's heating up. And give Stuart Hoff's racing credit too, right? They didn't have, you know, they had an expansion this year in the Xfinity Series with this double zero car full time. And both of these cars consistently have had speed. Both of them run well. A lot, of, a lot of fighting right here through traffic. Yeah, there's some more traffic out in front of the leaders. Could present some opportunities for either the 20. Nemechek dives to the bottom of the racetrack side by side right here. The double zero is going to throttle up, trying to create the momentum on corner exit to clear, and he's going to do it. Some of these lap cars coming into play. We'll see if Riley Herbst can use that to his advantage. Herbst with a big run on the 20 now. See the difference running the top of the bottom. Does down in turn three and four. That car on the top has so much speed down the front straightaway. Coming up on the final three laps of stage two. All right, the double zero's got to run the bottom here, Steve. He's not been running the bottom in three and four. What's this car going to look like? They try to go around that six car on the inside, all of them having to do this. No one able to run the top and take advantage of the momentum. What Cole did really nice there was not overdrive the bottom. I think when you have that rhythm of running the top, right? Now all of a sudden you think you could drive down to the bottom with a little bit more speed, overrun the front tires, and then once you slip off that white line, you get into that no man's land of the middle, right? You just get yeah. tight. The 20 got tight right there. You see the 98 closing the gap on him, running lower. Herbs that kind of had to guess where the 20 of Nemechek was going to go. He was hoping Nemechek was going to go to the top. Custer a little bit slow through the middle of three and four right there. Yeah, they're all kind of struggling. Custer said, hey, nobody's car's driving great. Look at their 20 up the racetrack again, the 98 to the bottom. We're going to be side by side coming off of turn two. A little side draft, almost contact. And Herbst looks great. Gonna try to wrap this bottom, hopefully trying to clear the 20. Oh, he's clear. That's what's impressive to me is the second half of that corner around the bottom. You and I were thinking clear the 20. He almost got all the way to the inside of the double zero. Yeah, he might get the double zero. Here he is back to the bottom. Oh, I love that line right there. One car lower. Oh, he's gonna get there. He's to the inside, now for the lead, Riley Hurst, the Las Vegas native, trying to take stage two. These are teammates. Hurst is gonna clear him easily, now the battle for second. And out of turn four, Riley Hurst is going to win stage two. That's his, his second career stage win. Cole Custer. John Hunter Nemechek, Allgaier, and Hemrick in the top five. Chandler Smith, Josh Berry, Sam Mayer, Sammy Smith, and Brandon Jones rounding out the top ten in stage two. But Herbst claims the stage two victory. Sunday night football, the New York Giants are going to head to Buffalo, face Josh Allen and the Bills. That coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with Football Night in America on NBC and Peacock. Again, starting quarterback Daniel Jones out with neck injury for the Giants. Buffalo had won three straight before losing to Jacksonville last week. As we get ready for pit stops here, Conclusion of stage two. And Steve, uh, with this stage being as long as it will be, uh, pit stops are going to have to fall in there as far as fuel mileage. Yeah, they can run about 60 laps. So this final stage will probably restart with about 106 to go. So uh, 60 laps on fuel. Everybody will have one, two sets of tires after this pit stop. So we'll just have to see how the final run goes. A little stack up coming to pit road. Lead lap cars on pit road coming to you, Kim. 
And John Hunter Nemechek saying he was tight. In fact, the little front chatter can't finish the corner and wrap it like he wants. Crew Chief Ben Bayshore card for a big air pressure adjustment on this, as well as a little bit of chassis adjustment for fresh Goodyear tires. Snowco Fuel Dave. From the rear of the field to the lead goes Riley Herbst. He said, "I'm losing right. I'm losing uh, grip as I go, but you can't hurt the front end. That's where my speed's coming from, Marty." Dave, remember Cole Custer came into the round of eight below the cut line, so 19 stage points today for this double zero team. Very critical. Just like his teammate said he lost grip the longer they ran. The teammates will have a drag race off pit road and Riley Herbst barely gets his teammate Cole Custer at the line, Rick. Those two hold position and Daniel Hemrick and their crew gain a couple spots on pit road. That pushes Nemechek and Allgaier both back of position. Myatt Snyder and his crew uh, very nice with four spots gained as does Austin Hill in the 21. We had mentioned earlier the IMSA race continuing. It is a Petit Le Mans, the last of four endurance races in 2023, a 10 hour long race. The sun has set racing into the night at Road Atlanta. This race really ramps up to the next level when we get to the darkness hours. All of the chips are on the table. The overall battle for the lead has been intense. In cars that have And still just over four hours and 20 minutes remaining in the Petit Le Mans there from Road Atlanta. Now all four of the GTP manufacturers are still championship eligible. So the Cadillac, Acura, Porsche, and BMW all still fighting for that championship title. And so many great stories, a part of what's taking place with the IMSA GTP Championship, Wayne Taylor Racing, Action Express, and the Penske Porsche number six. Those teams are separated by just 11 points starting this race. Yeah, COVID year, that race got delayed um, to later in the season after the NASCAR race had ended. So I got to go down there and see it in person. And um, just a great, I've been to Road Atlanta multiple times testing, but to see those sports cars and the multiple class is really captivating there because there's a really long kind of front and back straightaway from the back of the property. Um, and you can see the speed difference in the classes and then a little bit of technical stuff, kind of turn one through turn six. And now we're going to do all that in the dark here in a couple right. hours. Well, I mean, the back <laughs> half of that racetrack, there's no street lights. There's no anything. You're in the middle of nowhere. Take a look at the points earned today through the first two stages and Cole Custer grabbed 19 of those stage points. Chandler Smith, John Hunter Nemechek, Allgaier, Sammy Smith, Austin Hill, all grabbing points of the playoff drivers. And for John Hunter Nemechek, I think those 13 points are, are just going to free the driver up in this last stage. Remember, didn't get a chance to qualify, start in the back, and then did an amazing job of sixth and third in the two stages. And I think for that reason, plus the lead he came in on the reset points, um, you know, he doesn't want to be crazy, throw a Hail Mary here at the end of this race and wreck his race car. But, you know, I think he can still be a little aggressive. He doesn't have to be scared about the points. Sheldon Creed in the two car, one of our playoff drivers, has not gotten any stage points today. Sam Mayer only gets three for that one team. Yeah, and also the 21 gave up some stage points, was running six, had to come in for that loose lug nut in the second stage. And also Sammy Smith, he had to come down pit road also. and. You know, both of those guys gave up stage points, and you'd think that doesn't matter. But how many times have we seen one point be the difference between advancing to the next round of the playoffs? When you have points out there in front of him, you better find a way to execute and get them. And coming in to this race, Cole Custer was below the cut line, and now as they run, he's above the cut line by 18 points. So the big three, as we called them, uh, before the start of the race, John Hunter Nemechek, Allgaier, and Austin Hill, those three still uh, in their position, but now you add Cole Custer, and he's kind of jumped up into that big three, now making it the big four, and maybe someone's going to have to win their way to break up that four. Again, win and you advance in these playoffs. And the final stage from Vegas is underway. The green flag, green flag.
Junior, you mentioned the pushing on the restarts, and it's happening aggressively here. Yeah, if you're the lead car, you better hang on, because that second row has been pushing all the way down into turn one. John Hunter Nemechek using that middle line, and he is going to clear the 98 of Riley Herbst. I think that shocked Riley Herbst that John Hunter could get around him that quickly. John Hunter, I mean, that was a massive corner right there he was able to pull off. Here comes Austin Hill in the 21. He's on the bottom of that two wide back there, and it looks like it's going to send him up the racetrack just a bit. Had to get out of the gas. Cole Custer, Nemechek, Herbst, Hemrick, and Allgaier, the top five. Mike Snyder got a little tight off the turn four. Lost a little momentum. Has several cars trying to go to his inside now. And that Riley Herbst, he's returning the favor. We saw John Hunter Nemechek jump on the outside to get by him. Riley Herbst did the same thing to him. It took that 98 car lap and a half, two laps, to really understand where the grip was. That's this battle right here. Allgaier trying to get around. It's going to be tough to do. Now he's going to be battling with Chandler Smith down the front straightaway. No momentum. Here comes more cars from the back. Alka tried to throw the block. Now to the inside, the 21 car. Austin Hill can't quite get the job done. Austin Hill had a great pit stop. We've seen that all year long. They have gotten this 21 team tons of points how good that pit crew is. They are the best on pit road, period, end of story. Got him four on that one. All of his playoff competitors agree. They all pointed to the 21 car and said, you know, we need to just try to stay even with them. Uh, we know how good that team is, but they don't want to be losing spots on pit road and having to try to gain them back. We're going to send Mayor around the outside of the 21 of Austin Hill. Austin Hill trying to battle back. Here's the seven of Algar trying to get to the outside of Hemrick. Hemrick str struggling right now. As Chandler Smith was able to get by. This battle will sort itself out as we go back to the front of the field. Yeah, that car that you don't seem to recognize, the 27 with the pink rear bumper, that's Jeb Burton. On the pit stop, NASCAR felt like they had pulled the side skirt and added a little flair. So coming to the green flag, they were asked to come back in and flatten it back out. NASCAR's watched for this for years. He was running 22nd, so trying to improve his day, but now a lap down. Brandon Jones in the nine, tucked in behind the 21 of Hill. Jones going to the top of the track, trying to get some clean air. Sandy Smith right there behind him in that 18 car, lurking low. Everybody at the bottom of the racetrack down here in turn three and four. Nine and 18 running nose to tail. And a year from now, they'll be teammates. So Brandon Jones behind the nine, and it was announced earlier that Sammy Smith would be going to Junior Motorsports to drive next year for that organization. Yeah, when I look at all of the lineups, Junior Motorsports seems to be the one that has been announced and clear on who's going to be in what car. There's a lot of question marks. That two right there of Sheldon Crean just announced that he won't be back at RCR. We're not sure exactly what that means for him moving on, but what we know is now we need a driver to fill the two, and right behind him, you see the 11, that's Lane Riggs from Colleg Racing, but Colleg is a little bit, you know, open-ended on their driver lineup as well, so still a lot of movement to happen inside the Xfinity Series garage, Dave. And Steve, I'm hoping the drivers can expand on something I was hearing from Riley Herbst as he's now again going to challenge for the lead. The thing that he didn't want the team to do was affect the front turnability was his word of that race car. It looks like it's still working. They didn't hurt it. Riley Herbst back to the point. Riley Herbst, the advantage that he feels like he has is the front of his car turns. When he, wherever he turns a wheel, it points. And there's a huge advantage in doing that. That makes it easier. Everything is easier if the car points where you want it to go. You can go the gas sooner. 
He said, hey, yes, we might can make it better, but please do not take that away from me. Changes the points quite a bit there on the playoffs, the bottom left of the screen. Puts Cole Custer back in fourth position and shows you the difference that Chandler Smith, Sam Mayer, Sammy Smith are sitting at right there as the race is being ran. Cole's done some amazing work today. 19 points earned in, in both stages. I know he'd want to win to be able to get through, but they've done some awesome work. Josh Berry in this eight car racing Myatt Snyder in the 19. Myatt only has a few races that he runs, but runs the majority of the last five races of the year in this Joe Gibbs car. It's got to be hard, you know, to jump in these cars just every now and then, racing against people that race them every week. The eight car, Josh Berry, just not the speed we expected today. He's been so good at this racetrack, multiple wins. Today, it's just not there. Well, he started on pole, so when you say speed, we saw he had it for a lap, but for the longer runs, he hasn't had that continuous speed. I talked to him down on the grid, said he thought his car was good. You can see it right there, the car moving around a lot. He's struggling to put the power down, Dave. Well, and he's fighting now the fact that he came in seventh on that pit stop and went out 15th. I asked Taylor Moyer, the crew chief, what happened. He said, just a slow stop. So that, that can get into the psyche of the driver when you've been trying to fight back anyway, and then you lose all those positions on pit road. Yeah, it does. It, you know, you need all the help you can get. On these days where you aren't good, that's, that's really where a pit crew can really help you. If you can pick up two or three spots every every time you come down pit road, it is it is a breath of fresh air on a, on a day where your car just isn't like you need it to be. So Parker Retzlaff putting a little pressure now on Josh Berry. Steve, I want to go back up front and look at the 98 of Riley Herp. So he's got a 1.4 second lead. We saw Chandler Smith in the spring go out and dominate. He got out front, looked like he was a dominant car. Is there something right now you should be telling Riley like, hey, you don't need to press it so hard. You, you've got a big gap here. What do you do as a crew chief when you've got a car out here out front this far? Well, at this point, knowing I still have another pit stop to go, this stage I'm going to probably run pretty even, a little over 50 laps on both set of tires. I'm going to probably be pretty quiet all the way until this first pit stop. Let him manage it as he sees fit, run as hard as he'd like to run, and tell me which way the balance goes. And that way I maybe think I can make an adjustment or look at the pace and see if he pushed too hard really to prep that last 50. That's the key. Um, you know, you don't get a lot of 50 lap runs. You don't really test anymore. You don't get practice anymore. This is when you get to figure it out is in the race. So at this point, I'm letting Riley Herbst enjoy the day. Enjoy leading. This is a driver that even in the mix of the playoffs was so consistent with his messaging. He didn't care about points. He wants to win a race. How special would it be if it could happen in his hometown of Las Vegas? Riley Herbst out front and 14 laps led up to this point. Cole Custer about 1.2 seconds back. Nice footwork. Man, you're lucky. Watching live sports never used to be this easy. Now you can stream all your games like it's nothing. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Oh, here he comes. Go! Yeah! Yeah! Running up and down that field looks tough. It's a pitch. Get way more into what you're into when you stream on the Xfinity 10G network. <laughs> a first child can be stressful. So to make things a little less overwhelming, Progressive is offering special rewards for new parents. But we're not stopping there. We think even cat ladies deserve rewards. Left-handed people, people with birthdays, Recent grads who can't move on with their lives. All of them and these people we found on the internet can be automatically enrolled in the Progressive Loyalty Program and get special rewards. Even people who just got back from Europe. It's actually pronounced croissant. I was just in Europe. With the Sonic 2 for 7 deal, you can choose from three delicious favorites for only seven bucks. A Sonic cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, or a foot-long chili cheese coney. It might be the greatest pairing since cherry and limey. Sonic 2 for 7 deal. Experience the joy of home sweet hosting with help from Ashley. Pay 0% interest for five years on guest approved essentials starting at just $17 per month. Plus save on accessories store wide to finish every look. Shop and save today only at Ashley.
You're welcome, America. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs, Green flag is in the air. names are made here. And here. At the line. And definitely here. But with the championship on the line, your name can only take you so far. A will to win, a hunger for speed, and a whole lot of attitude. That's how to see your name in bright lights. The NASCAR Xfinity Series Playoffs. Eighty-five to go in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoff race from Las Vegas. It's the Osco uniforms 302 with Riley Herbst up front, and he continues to lead laps. 20 laps led now. Uh, had never led a lap here prior to today, but he is out front, enjoying his time and the view that he has. Now time for the. Toyota driver update John Hunter Nemechek who is running in the third position started back in 38 Steve had that issue with the rear end yeah I think it was an axle seal kind of leaked the rear end grease down the axle tube and out the right rear wheel so for the second week in a row the 20 car didn't get to make a qualifying lap sure that's something they're going to try to tidy up at the shop they can't be happy about it but John Hunter and the entire organization doing a nice job recovering. Yeah, back in 20th, 45 car, Rajak Ruth. I want to take everybody back earlier into the race. We had a massive crash get down into turn one. We're riding on board with Rajak right here. The inside car there, Kaz Grala blows the motor. When he goes across in front of Rajak, all that oil on the tires of the 45 car and made big contact with the right rear. Tore the whole rear crush panel out of the car. This is live right now. Looking down on that right rear tire. Look at that bodywork moving around. We're going to look, look at a comparison to John Hunter Nemechek above. See how it's all sealed off on that right side for the 20 car. Now Raja is running great in 20th place. I'm impressed by the speed this car has, not only because it's unsealed all through here. Not sure if that's good or bad, but the Side force maybe going away because of how weak that side is from the contact that he had earlier. But also the heat and the carbon monoxide, the fumes, all of those things are pouring into that race car because the exhaust is right there on that lower right side. Yeah, Raja, you said doing a nice job in these conditions. Hendrick Motorsports has been paying attention. He's going to get to drive Hendrick Motorsports car in the Xfinity Series at Phoenix. That is an incredible opportunity for this young man see what he could do in a car that, that we know whenever that race car hits the racetrack, runs up toward the front. Right up against the wall for the circle.com on board of Raja Karuth as we see Riley continuing to set a blistering pace here as he's going to put the 08 of Stefan Parsons Another lap down. That'll be two laps down for Stefan. Well, you asked Steve a minute ago, what do you tell him? You know, you tell him to back off. Well, no one has, clearly, because he is two tenths a lap faster than the next fastest competitor. He's just on a rail today. And this is kind of the, you know, we've seen this for this 98 car. They have speed. That double zero has speed. Keep waiting to see him get that first win. This, this obviously could be the day. Oh, it could be the day. You talk about drivers getting great opportunities. Ryan Reed. Uh, the next car to go a lap down, but it's worth talking about. This driver has a couple wins in the Xfinity Series. He hasn't raced since 2018 Miami. Uh, for those who don't know about Ryan's story, he used to drive with a big pharmaceutical sponsor. He is a diabetic, and he had a diabetic medicine on the hood of his car. He used to have a bullseye on the quad, the thigh area of his fire suit, in case he got low blood sugar. His pit crew member was literally trained to give him a shot during the race i mean it was in the bullseye yeah amazing <laughs> um and it's great to see ryan back i've had a lot of conversations you run into him around kind of the mooresville north carolina area and he just never thought he'd get a shot back in the car so it's great to see ryan in a car somewhat five or six years after his last race and doing a really good job for somebody who has a lot of seat time but the seat time nearly a half a decade ago yeah his last three full seasons he made the playoffs absolutely good to see him back competing here today just a spot 
in front of him is Dawson Cram running in the 22nd position in the 74 car. And that's one that fights every week when he comes to the racetrack to even make the race uh, in qualifying and had a pretty decent qualifying effort here today. And right now still running on the lead lap in 22nd. Dave. Rick, you mentioned making the race, and that's one thing that Ryan Reed had to do with this 66 car. In fact, he told me in practice he'd have to go out there and do what they call a mock qualifying run right away. Run it as hard as you can like you're qualifying because he needed to know what it would do when they changed tires and had him actually go qualify. So there you have it. Hasn't raced since 2018, did some sim work this week, but jumps right back in the car and had to go fire off, and he was quick enough to make the show and is racing well. Sammy Smith gets another spot going by Hemrick, the 11 of Lane Riggs. Man, Lane doing a nice job. Yep. Texas couldn't have really gone worse. The poor guy had an accident three laps into practice. Doing a nice job, not just running the laps. I mean, it's one thing to run the laps, but he's running very high-end quality laps around the cars you need to run around to learn as much as possible. Yeah, he, he went to work and went to school during that first stage, that second stage. Now he's finally starting to figure this racetrack out, what he can do to make time, where the car needs to be. He sees he needs to put that splitter, that left front tire, right on that line in turn three. He knows about the bumps and how to get through them, how they can upset the car in turns one and two. And I've seen him actually run in the fence in three and four. One of the hardest things to really understand for a young driver at a, at a mile and a half for the first time. So he's found some speed wherever he can go. Yeah, here's Myatt Snyder. Talked about him earlier, only a few races. He's got good pace right here also. So a lot of, you know, limited practice. We talk about this in the Xfinity Series primarily because there's so many young drivers. You get such little practice time. You have to learn during the races. And unfortunately, uh, you're learning when, when everybody's watching, right? And you've got to go learn in the, hit, in the middle of competition. It's a very challenging situation for these young guys. With Myatt Snyder, he's raced three times this year, but the gaps in between 11 races between first and second and 15 races between second and third. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 90. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Four finalists will win a trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway, with the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Here they are, the eight semifinalists for the million-dollar prize. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR and home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some Tay-Tays. Eggman and Saucy Boy. Two hot coffees. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar piggy bundles. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. You're welcome, America. Experience the joy of home sweet hosting with help from Ashley. Pay 0% interest for five years on guest approved essentials starting at just $17 per month. Plus save on accessories store wide to finish every look. Shop and save today only at Ashley. The Sonic 2 for 7 deal lets you choose from the Sonic cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, or foot long chili cheese coney. Any two for seven bucks. Because that friend that says they only want one bite never just wants one bite. Sonic 2 for 7 deal. The Bush Light Clash is coming back to the Coliseum. The thunder of the engines will roar to life as NASCAR kicks off its season the only way it knows how with a bang. Oh, LA's finest and NASCAR's fastest will put on a show that will finish under the lights and live for years to come. Get your tickets now at NASCARClash.com.
68 now coming up on 67 laps remaining from here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway and Las Vegas native Riley Herbst is out front. He has led the most laps in a race ever for his career as he is now led 37 and counting. Dive a little bit deeper on the driver of the 16 with Kim. Yeah, Chandler Smith. Remember, this is only his second start at Las Vegas in the Xfinity Series, and he told Steve Letarte during the pace laps at the beginning of the race, there's no pressure, all windows of opportunity. So where did that confidence come from? Well, Crew Chief Bruce Schlicker told me this morning that his performance at Texas recently, where he finished fourth and had such a strong day, just injected him with a lot more confidence than he had during the summer. Right now, overall, just needs to be tighter, Dave. He said that's the only way he feels comfortable running near the high line. Kim, but a bit of a tough day for Austin Hill, told me before the race he wasn't sure what he'd have and it hasn't been good right in there the middle of the corner is their worst problem it was bad earlier they made an adjustment it's not much better he said right now I'm sideways I need a big adjustment next time down pit road Marty Dave Sam there is flirting with the top five for the first time all day long just right behind his teammate Justin Algar you know coming into the day the one team ranked 25th in point turned a mile and a half racetracks with one one top 30 finish this year so Steve if you're Marty Lynn and you're leading this team, do you count a top five, a top ten, as a good day for your 20-year-old driver to say, hey, we walked out of Vegas with our first top ten of the year, the first top five of the year in a mile and a half. We consider that a good one. Oh, I think a top five is a great day for this young race team. And what I like about Marty Lindley and Sam Mayer and what they're doing is it, it doesn't sound like they're working on the next four races of this year. It seems like they have a much bigger plan all year long. It seems... You know, their patience has built with one another. There's been some criticism, but the veteran on top of the pit box, a longtime racer, is really trying to guide and mold this young race car driver. And you see it with the results. Three wins already this year. And his win last week, I thought, was very patient because when he got behind, he could have bowled those to Cole Custer right away. But he took that extra couple corners, those extra couple laps to get cleanly by him. Uh, small things like that are really showing up for the driver of the one. Mayor currently running in that sixth spot. There's Brandon Jones behind him, Austin Hill, Sammy Smith, and Lane Riggs uh, still running in the top ten. Well, we should be very close to pit stops. Daniel Hamrick's going to start the cycle. I think this is a little bit early, 63 to go. He could probably just now make it on fuel, and this is a driver that can gamble. He's not in the playoffs, so on the early side of the window, Dave. And a driver who wants his car to be adjusted it has not been good for Hemrick this run. He said we need to go back on the changes. It's not working like I thought it would. So they'll make an air pressure adjustment here for Goodyear tires. And Daniel Hemrick will start the cycle of these green flag stops. Yeah, and this cycle I think is going to work from back to front with the leader having such a big gap of six seconds. Uh, you know, the guys around Hemrick are going to kind of make a change. So here's Creed, who's coming from the 12th position. But unlike other stops, Kim, it's kind of single threat one at a time. And Sheldon right there, uh, almost over that line, very close. But right now, he was just frustrated with the balance of that race car. Said, I throttle up and the right rear is out of the track. I go back and forth between tight and loose. They will make some significant adjustments for Sheldon Creed on this machine. As we look at Chandler Smith making routine service under green, he said he was just way too free. That run did not feel comfortable running up the higher line. So they will make an air pressure adjustment on those four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for Chandler Smith. And at this point, normally kind of leaders have to react right away. If I'm the crew chief, Dapper Estivo, the crew chief of the 98, I might be the last car to come to pit road. I'm not going to lose this race by a ill-timed caution trapping me a lap down. Uh, so I'm going to take my time. Even now that the seven has printed from fourth, you know, he had over 12 seconds, 13 seconds of a gap over the seven. So you can run a couple extra laps. Now pit road gets a little bit busier. I would let it cycle out maybe three or four laps more and then come if I'm the 98. Marty. Justin Allgaier, bottom of your screen, coming down pit road. And then they have struggled with an extremely tight race car on this run for Allgaier. They're going to make a pretty significant adjustment here, trying to free it up just a little bit. 
loose race, loose race car, Marty, for the 21 of Austin Hill on the top of the screen there. They'll make a big adjustment like he wanted for him right here. Marty, back to you. Cole Custer coming down to a road date, so the car was just way too free, and he predicted it would not be good on the longer run, and that also takes away his ability to run the top of the racetrack, which Custer loves to do. John Hunter Nemechek in front of you, Kim. That's right, Marty. Right now, he just said the right rear's out of the racetrack, so he needs more rear stability, especially the longer the run goes. You see the chassis wrench go in there for that adjustment. Four tires, so no go fuel. Green flag pit stops happening. 59 to go here at Las Vegas as we start the round of eight. Sam Mayer at the very front of the pit road said the cars just built way too free, but he had top five lap times at the end of that run, Dave. Riley Herbst, the leader, comes to pit road. He said, I didn't like the balance as well as we had it the last time. One and two is really good, but I feel like I've got no rear tires, no grip in the rear of the car in three and four, so they'll make adjustments here. As for Sammy Smith, he was asked by crew chief Jeff Mendering, did you like that adjustment or go back the other way? Sammy Smith drives the 18 said I did not like it please go back the reverse what they did last time here for Sammy green flag pit stops continuing Connor Mozak is on pit road now as well see Sammy Smith finishing his service the 98 had nearly a seven second lead at the beginning of the cycle so normally we would show the blend and see just how close it is but uh, congratulations to the 98 for bringing such a great race car doing a nice job on and off pit road he should very quickly cycle back to the lead as we see the rest of the cars pit the 98 is right here at the start finish it's picked up it's the 16 is my math of chandler smith who he's a ways back here you're gonna have to take your take a break because here comes the 16 no there you go the double zero of cole custer and then you see the 16 of Chandler Smith. So a big gap for the 98. Uh, right behind him, John Hunter Nemechek in the 20. We had some pretty interesting pit entries as this track tends to give us from time to time. And one of them was John Hunter Nemechek coming down pit road. Cole Custer in front of him. Look at the gap here. Look how much faster. A little bit of wheel hop. Whoa. Whoa. And that can sometimes, man, that can damage. Uh, the rear end, the gear, the drive line in that car, getting those wheels hopping really, really hard on the pit road right there. Yeah, the other thing that happened to John Hunter is that he got in there so hot with the wheels hopping, and he, had, he was way faster than pit road speed, so he had to stop to keep from getting penalized for pit road. Remember, pit road speed is measured from one time in line to another. It's the number of seconds it takes to get from one to the next. Had he not essentially but stopped, he would have been speeding. So, yeah, he overcooked it and made a mistake, but he didn't make it worse. He just said, okay, I'm in trouble. I got to stop. I can't be caught speeding. Good job. Just trying to make up time on pit road, but a little bit of a mistake, but a great decision by him. We saw Ryan Sieg also with a tire violation. Uh, so a penalty for Ryan as you see John Hunter Nemechek going by the slower car that was coming to pit road and yeah, john hunter Dimitex lost a couple seconds to custer and now he's right behind chandler smith for fourth place so now back to your original question on that 98 who uh has a five second lead on the 29 who still has to come to pit road but a 7.1 second lead back to custer now is when i'm on the radio and i'm not going to try to get him flipped out and say hey great job on the cycle you have about the same lead you did this run is the same distance or maybe a couple laps longer of what you just did that's all he really needs don't fill the, the the driver's head full of information he's a race car driver he's done this a lot I know he hasn't won yet but if you make it feel different then you're, you're creating something that isn't there just let him do what he does uh, be a race car driver and give him an idea of what he has in front of him for laps left as we see Sammy Smith I think making a second trip to pit road he was just on pit road at lap 143. Now we're lap 148, so five laps later. Remember, this team had to pit a second time earlier to put Lugnos back on the left front. Now it looks like they're changing tires, so I don't know if he thinks he has a flat or a loose wheel, Dave. Steve, a loose wheel, this time on the right side. So it's tough, tough day on pit road for this crew. And this is on green flag. This is a 20, 25 point penalty. We talk a lot about points. What does that look like? This right here is maybe 15 to 25 points. So in the, in the grand scheme of what they're trying to accomplish, this is making it much, much more difficult with only two laps or two races remaining in this round. It is a team sport. A lot of conversation about the mistakes of Sammy Smith. 
has been making throughout the year, but here a team problem. Sammy's cleaned it up in the playoffs, now having issues on pit road. Couple mistakes from Daniel Dye in the 44 and Raja Karuth in the 45, both speeding when they came to pit road under this most recent caution or this most recent pit cycle. Under 51 laps remaining, and out front, Riley Hertz has a seven and a half second lead over Cole Custer, Chandler Smith, Nemechek, and Kyle Sieg, the top five. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers across the country, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to be the fuel that keeps you firing on all cylinders. Right now at Napa, get a five-quart jug of Napa full synthetic motor oil from 1999. Or claim a $25 Visa card when you purchase a Napa Legend, Napa Legend Premium AGM, or AAA battery. Nice footwork. Man, you're lucky. Watching live sports never used to be this easy. Now you can stream all your games like it's nothing. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! Oh, here he comes! Go! Yeah! 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 Running up and down that field looks tough. It's a pitch. Get way more into what you're into when you stream on the Xfinity 10G network. I'm all about fall, especially this new pumpkin spice frosty. Yeah, after it! So I'm taking some me time out here. Question for you! So, fries or a utensil, right? Good question. Okay. It is a good question. Well, Can you give us an answer? It? Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new pumpkin spice frosty or cold brew. Some days, I don't have time to slow down. So sipping on coffee just isn't an option. That's when I turn to five-hour energy. It's my five-second coffee. Discover five-hour energy. something greater. Toyota, let's go places. We all know Monday mornings are the worst. But Monday nights, that's a whole other story. Because that's when Raw is bringing that heat. That swagger. That hype. We're kicking things off in a big, big way. Who's ready to sing? So you better be watching Raw. Live, Mondays at 8, only on USA. Riley Herbst out front has an eight-second lead. And again, at the conclusion of today's Xfinity Series race, we'll go straight to Petit Le Mans from Road Atlanta. Uh, that one will go into the night as the last race for IMSA. Uh, that's currently on Peacock. Tomorrow, it's countdown to green and Cup Series playoff race number one of this third round. And that will be on NBC. And immediately following the race, we will have NASCAR America post race, which will stream on Peacock. Sheldon Creed just goes a lap down. Uh, you see Kyle Seek dropping through the lineup there as he had stayed out on the racetrack, now has pitted. And so the top 15 have all been to pit road and have had their service. Pretty tight racing uh, right around the Allgaier, Mayer, Austin Hill area. Take a look at that. Yeah, they all did a really good job not to make contact or get anybody turned around right there. Just got to remember, there's zero grip. They're all sliding across the racetrack, and they're all controlling their cars well enough not to run into each other. And this battle right here, it's been going on before the pit cycle. The one of Sam Mary has been within 10, 20 car lengths of Justin Algar just now starting to put himself in position where he might be able to try to make a move on the seven car. Made some adjustments to try to free up Algar. It seems to maybe the car's turning better, but it hasn't really added much speed to the car to be able to maintain this position. 
Let's do a playoff driver through the field and we'll kick it off with Cole Custer and Marty Smith. How about Marty Snyder? Right now, Cole Custer in second position. And, you know, they have been no worse than six here in the playoffs. 19 stage points, though, for Cole Custer today. They came in below the cut line. Those are critical points for them, Kim. And he goes to Miami next week, where he's won before. So they have a lot of confidence after this run going to Miami next week. And running behind Cole Custer in the third position is Chandler Smith. And when I talked to Chandler and the team this morning, they felt really good about today after what they had in practice yesterday. They said they brought something similar to what they had in the spring where they finished third. Chandler told me he studied the spring race on the plane out here just to make sure he was extra confident. Right now we're seeing a great run from him in the third position. John Hunter Nemechek running in the fourth position. What a run for him today after starting from the rear after not having qualified his car yesterday. Yesterday, they were really confident because of the speed they've had at mile and a half all year long. Remember, he's won the last two races on mile and a half, and he finished sixth in stage one, third in stage two. So racking up those points, putting him in a good points position right now, Marty. Kim, considering their mile and a half program so far this year with just one finish inside the top 30, this is a terrific day for Sam Mayer in the top five right now. But the flip side of that, just three stage points. And right now, 17 below the cut line. Marty Lindley told me earlier this week we're so close to being in a must win situation despite this good day they could have some tough roads ahead at Miami and Martinsville. Justin Allgaier has absolutely struggled with the handling of his race car for the second half of this race. He just told Jim Pullman a moment ago I need much more of that last adjustment you gave me way too tight for Allgaier but in the sixth position Dave. When will the 21 team start putting the heat on? No playoff points added in the round of 12. No laps led in the round of 12. That stays the same today. Justin uh, Austin Hill thankfully had six stage points throughout the day, but that's been the best as he's had an ill handling car and a couple of troubles on pit road, Kim. Well, speaking of ill handling cars, Sheldon Creed has not had the car he wanted all day long. 13th position currently the first car a lap down he said it's been bouncing between loose and tight depending on where they are in the run and where he is on the racetrack again just not to his liking and they have earned no stage points today Dave which means depending on how this race plays out they will be buried in the points as they head to Homestead Miami next week Sammy Smith earned 10 Kim and that was a good thing because they had another problem on pit road it may have been the left rear again but it was really hard to tell the team was looking over all the uh, lug holes in the wheels just to see what they could see. Sammy definitely knew there was vibration there. They couldn't see much with this 18. And with 37 to go, Riley Herbst is putting such an impressive pace on the field. He's lapped all the way up to the 13th guy, only 12 cars in the lead lap. And that's important for the 98 because continuing to lap cars makes the decision and the pressure on a late pit stop if we have a yellow less for the, for the crew chief, right? For sure, if we see a yellow, you're going to want to put tires on. Most of the leaders have a set of tires left, except for someone who may have had an issue or a loose wheel and burned up the extra set. So to guarantee the best finish, I know you want to win, but the best finish is just to eliminate as many cars as possible on the lead lap. Next up, Josh Berry. Fight for second, which is 10 seconds behind Riley Herbst right now, is Cole Custer and Chandler Smith. Yeah, John Hunter Nimchek's right there, too, in the screen. So... Well, these two battle might present an opportunity for that 20. This double zero slides up the racetrack, blocks the 16, 16 to the inside. Custer struggling with the balance. Here comes the 20 car as well. So John Hunter Nemechek's going to take advantage of a loose car, and Cole Custer falls back into that fourth position now. So it's Riley Herbst, Chandler Smith, John Hunter Nemechek, one, two, three. Marty. Yeah, you heard Cole Custer say, Rick, just way too free right now. And Junior, you know, Cole Custer is so good at running the wall. When you're loose like that, especially on entry, you can't run the wall like Cole Custer can normally do. So they're struggling with a very loose race car after leading 62 laps early on. Yeah, when run, nobody has run the wall since stage one. I mean, the whole field is on the bottom of the racetrack. That's, basic, that's kind of a tire thing. You know, this tire is just not reacting in a way where they're finding much speed running the top of the racetrack. It doesn't put a ton of rubber down, and so the track stays relatively green, and that bottom groove is probably still providing enough grip that you can't make the time at the top of the racetrack. You don't see any rubber being put down just outside of that bottom groove, and so 
And Custer being loose, you you got to back up the entry of the top and then gas it up and fly around the exit. That's how you make speed on the top of the racetrack. And if you're loose, you have to go in so much easier. And you never really can make up the time lost on entry being loose in up high. 11 seconds now, the gap from Herbst back to Chandler Smith. And Rick, you know, I would try not to Rick Allen, poor Riley Herbst right here and, and jinx the guy, but don't say it. We, no, listen, what I want to say, though, is 11 seconds. Of course, it would be more exciting if this was the battle for the lead. But in every other sport, you know, this great performances are celebrated, right? If it's a 10-shot win at a golf tournament, right, Junior? Or if, or if a, a quarterback has this best day and throws five or six touchdowns. And I think it's Riley Herbst has earned this. He has put the effort in, put the grind in, and fallen short. So regardless how the race turns out, this is a winning-type performance. You said it, Rick. An over 11-second lead, a green flag cycle, some restarts. Remind everyone, he started last. Yep. They had to make repairs into this car to make sure NASCAR was okay with it because he had a little damage. This car went from last to first and has led 73 laps. Dave. And just think of what the summer has been like for Riley Herbst. Didn't make the playoffs, really thought he would. Had a lot of speed, but still hasn't won his first race yet. I remember talking to him after Darlington, a race he thought he could win, and he was so disappointed. They'd already had disappointment at Daytona uh, with a mechanical issue. Lots of changes to this team. The crew chief got promoted, and so he had a new guy on the box for him, so he had to deal with that. Uh, but he's been working through all of that, and he was very calm when I sat down and talked to him for about 20 minutes at Kansas he said he believed things would get better they made some changes internally they've gotten the race car better and more consistent and now Riley's showing what he can do when they get it right for him yeah, Riley, Riley Herbs is such a nice young man had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with him and he's just a well-rounded guy he's worked really really hard to just get better and better and better he doesn't take anything for granted works very hard and, you know, I think about this team, you know, they went through that stretch where they had so many mechanical failures back to back to back. And that could have been, that could have torn this team apart. It really could have because they were in the midst of a championship battle when those things were happening. And it's great to see them coming back together next year because the speed's there, right? They have fast race cars. We're seeing it again today. We haven't seen this much speed, but... They have fast race cars. This has been a good pairing between a driver and a crew chief, and they just have to get through those mistakes. And if they can, they could have long-term success. Celebrate a blistering pace that Riley Hertz has put out here. And Riley's family is not normally from the oval racing background but they have racing uh, as far as in their genetics because riley's grandfather jerry his uncles ed and tim and his father troy they were inducted into the southern nevada sports hall of fame in 2014 for their off-road racing career so racing's in the family but it's not normally on ovals and, and if you're the crew chief of this 98 kind of back to that common thread we talked about let him know the gap he has, but don't let him off the hook. What's your car drive like, right, Jeff? What do you need? If we get a caution, the next run's only going to be half this length, 25 laps. I am on you. We are not going to be a team that gives up a great race car. We are going to keep pushing to think we're not good enough, not push into mistakes, but you cannot relax in this situation. Do not relax in this situation. That is the worst thing you can do, in my opinion. I know you got a big lead, but it's no different than any other, any other sport. You see a team start playing defense, next thing you know, you're, the other team is putting points on the board, and all of a sudden you have a close game. The, the, to me, Junior, when I was in these situations where I had a big lead, the thing I wanted was just lap time, right? And the cup cars, you, you have it on your dash. You can look and see lap time. And these cars, that communication from your crew chief or the spotter giving you a lap time, 32.50. Right? That means the next lap you need to run another 3250. And then the next lap another 3250. That's your goal. One lap at a time. Hit that, make those lap times. That keeps you centered and it has it keeps constant communication to you to let you know, hey, guys are out here, we're all behind you, we got you back. Keep communicating, like Steve said, 
But the main goal now is focus on lap time because that keeps you focused on the racetrack. And that's what you're racing at the moment. It's the racetrack. It's not the competition. Yeah, I like to tell my crew chief, uh, you know, am I going 100 percent? Am I going 80, 90 percent? How hard am I driving the car? I'd like him to tell me what lap times are running. They're running behind me and where they're running. You know, at this particular racetrack, are they running on the middle? You know, are they finding speed up top? Do I need to? you know, be ready for that or concerned about that late in the race if we do get a late run. Continue to give me some information. Keep the conversation going. So, Rick, you know, to, to the Tart's point, when the caution does come, when the when the field is reset, when everybody's got them tires, I'm, I'm awake, I'm alert, I'm ready to go. I got plenty of information on exactly what's happening. And Riley definitely doesn't want to have a caution come out now with the lead that he has built up. It's 13 seconds from Riley Herbst to Nemechek. A couple laps down already is McLaughlin and running in the 30th position, but before the race started, told the story about Jen Calandrillo. And to put a period on that, let's go to Dave. I've watched Jen work today, and she hasn't had all the smooth pit stops she would want to, but I chatted with her about that, and she just kind of shrugged her shoulders and said, you know, that's sometimes the way it goes. They've had three pit stops for the 28 car. Jen has put fuel in the car every time, and just a reminder, those gas cans weigh 90 pounds when they're full and when you fuel the race car. Remember what the pit crew coach told her when she said she wanted to give it a try? He said, you're too old and you're too small. Jen said, nah, I'm going to add some muscle, and I'm going to do it, and she's done it today in a good way opportunities there continue to be opportunities in NASCAR and Jen taking advantage of this one Riley Herbst taking advantage of a very good day under 20 laps still to go here as we see Parker Retzloff just in front of that 16 Chandler Smith and again Chandler running in the third position, so Retzloff uh, about to go down a second lap. Well, Sheldon Creed behind him, let's remind everybody, he's not on the lead lap. So we have Herbst out to this almost 14 second lead, but then Nemechek, Chandler Smith, Custer, Mayer, Allgaier Hill, all playoff drivers, second through seventh. You know, I, I know they're gonna all wish they had the day the 98 is having, but it's really Sheldon Creed and Sammy Smith that are going to wish that they had another shot at this. Sammy Smith had a loose wheel. They had lug nuts earlier and then a loose wheel. Sheldon Creed running 15th. So two playoff drivers are currently on the outside of the top 10. And those are the two that are currently at the bottom of the points and minus 40 and minus 34. Austin Hill heating things up for Allgaier now. And that is for the sixth position. Allgaier has it. Hill trying to take it away from him. Yeah, these these ba these points matter. You know, Austin Hill came into this race 21 points to the good. As we sit now, he's 18 points to the good. And you've got Homestead coming, which is a very difficult racetrack, very easy to get into the wall. And then Martinsville, which we know anything can happen at that racetrack. So every position, every point matters. 16 laps to go. Coming this time, you, you've got to try to get every spot you can. Jeff, do you know what the largest margin of victory in an Xfinity Series race is here at Las Vegas? I don't know, Rick. That's a tough question to ask me. Well, <laughs> you're, you're the person who has it. You own the record for the largest margin of victory at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the Xfinity Series, and it's 8.4 seconds. You beat Michael Waltrip back in March of 02. Well, I am not going to Rick Allen, Riley Herbst, but he has got a larger lead than that at the moment. Almost 14 seconds. Well, I'm going to make you feel good. Riley Herbst was three when you won that race. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Friends like you, who needs enemies? <laughs> All there. guy right here in Hill still fighting for these points. You know, this is the point. And we saw Daniel Hembrick eliminated from the last round with two points. And, they were, and he was three feet away from those two points at one of the stage ends. So all guy is feeling pretty good right at plus 20. But you have the 21 car at plus 18. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. You mentioned it, Rick. We go to Miami and then Martinsville. And, and 
uh, you know, Miami, you have to run the fence so you can get into the wall in a blink of an eye. And then at Martinsville, I mean, we saw, you know, last laps with the driver being moved a year ago. And we have seen that consistently at the, the paper clip. And I would expect nothing less in a couple weeks. Different lines here for Austin Hill and Allgaier as Hill still trying to get that sixth spot away. Those two the closest on the track on the lead lap, which now only has 10 cars on the lead lap. Lane Riggs the next to potentially go down a lap. And what a job by Lane Riggs running in 10th. I mean, when you look at, at someone like Lane Riggs in that 11, I'm looking at the timings on the left side. You know, he's right behind Hembrick. So you kind of, you know, there you go. You kind of judge him up against another college car. Chandler Smith having a little bit better day. But if you got to pick one of your three cars that have the best day, you'd want to, to be the playoff car. Yeah, and behind this battle, the nine car, Brandon Jones, you know, they have definitely not had the year that they were hoping to have. Uh, but we're starting to see this nine car run more in the top ten, right? It just it feels like nothing went right for this team early in the year. He was in the wrong place. It seemed like every single wreck, every single race, wreck after wreck after wreck, most of them not of his doing, and he just dug such a hole he couldn't get out of it. And it's so important for this team to build a little momentum, right? Going into the off season. There's a championship to be won next year. I know it's a long way from next year already, but that's what a team like this is focusing on is how can we get better so that next year we can come and take the fight to these guys. Gap growing between Allgaier and Hill. This is a 94 lap green flag run at a little over 30 seconds a lap. You're talking 46, 47 minutes uh, of green flag racing. That's a tremendous amount of focus and effort. I know it's on a very hot day here in Las Vegas, but we've seen so many close calls, you know, as far as two and three wide or catching lap cars. You're running the top, running the bottom. Great battle right here for third shaping up. Custer, who is fighting a very loose race car, settled things down has now ran down Chandler Smith in his 16 car for colleague. Watch this race car, the 16, see if we can sort of identify some handling issues that's allowed Custer to sort of run him back down. Everybody's sliding around, everybody's out of the gas, tiptoeing on the throttle. Cars are sliding around pretty bad out there right now at this particular point of the race. And Chandler Smith just trying to hang on and keep Cole Custer behind him. Cole's drawing in. Some traffic ahead. Cole Custer to the top of the racetrack. He's got some momentum right here. Got a good run off a of turn two. Going to turn underneath, maybe? For third. Let's see if he can take the spot away as Cole Custer Works to the bottom of the race trip. Oh. Chandler Smith goes down there with him, maybe trying to take a little of that air off the right side. Okay, we're going to do three wide momentarily for a minute. It's bad, bad spot for the 16. He has, he has to lift for that outside car. It's going to allow the double zero through. Marty. Boy, Junior Cole Custer has been so impressive in these playoffs. Now up to third for him. And they're happy, I would think, to get through this race. He told me Las Vegas, by far my worst mile and a half racetrack. And then next week he goes to Miami, his best mile and a half racetrack. You throw Martinsville into that when they finish third in the spring. So you guys mentioned the big three. Steve, do you think that Cole Custer is the guy that jumps in there and said, hey, it's not a big three, it's a big four here in the Xfinity Series this year? Well, I think Cole Custer is a cup driver. He was in the cup series. He won at the cup level. Um, I was surprised how slow the double zero came out of the box at the beginning of this year. I expected more. I wonder how fast the cars were, but to be quite honest, Riley Herbst came out of the box okay. Now, with not only the good run of the double zero in third, but his team car dominating this race, that has to give Cole Custer a great sense of pride and confidence. Uh, he, I think, knows what he can accomplish. But now his organization, guys, is looking at a potential first third. And again, uh, a little over six laps from now, uh, we'll be joining Petit Lama from Road Atlanta. Again, a very big field, the largest field in Petit Lama history at 52 cars. Uh, and again, you'll see about 90 minutes that will be uh, in the dark as far as after sunset. 
for that race. And again, that's coming up just under five laps to go here for the Xfinity Series race. And 14 seconds now is the gap from Riley Herbst back to John Hunter Nemechek. And yeah, Riley Herbst now with coming to four to go. Now, Steve, I wanted to say, okay, we do not need to catch the 11 car in front of us. We can give up a second a lap, just ride around here. And that's the goal at this point. There is absolutely no need to push the car. 14 seconds and only four laps to go. It is now just do not make a mistake time. Yeah, I agree. Now I, you have to have enough respect for your 24 year old that he can manage that information at this point. Let him know what you have. And Riley's sitting in that car listening to every sound going, is that new? Uh, <laughs> is that a vibration I feel? And he's praying that he doesn't hear anything from the spotter talking about a car here in the wall, any kind of an issue, a yellow flag for any reason. That's the things that drive a young driver crazy when he's coming down to the finish and possibly winning a race. Don't need to do anything here. Just keep, keep rolling here. You're coming to shoot to go. Some great information right there. But he's begging. He just cannot wait to be able to come off a of turn four and get to that white flag. He knows the next flag ends it. And he just wants to cross the white flag. The 24-year-old yeah. out of Las Vegas has 138 starts. Three seconds in his career. We talked about it earlier. It's worth mentioning again in that playoff run with Parker Kligerman of trying to make the playoffs. Mechanical took him out. Really kind of bit his tongue. I think there was a few times he wanted to lose his mind in some of those interviews because he just was sitting on pit road with a broken race car. He stuck behind his team. And look where they're at right now. And at that whole time, he just wanted to win a race, Rick. And here he is. Basically, one and a half, nearly two miles away from his first win. It's one lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. You're hearing the crew talk to him. I love you so much, man. Thank you for everything, buddy. Last two first-time winners, Ryan Truex at Dover. That was his home track. Sam Mayer at Road America. That was his home track. And now, Riley Herbst, a Las Vegas native with 50 to 60 of his friends and family in the grandstands are here to witness his first ever win in the Xfinity Series. Vegas native Riley Herbst in front of the grandstands. He'll win here at Las Vegas. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, buddy. Welcome to the NASCAR Xfinity Series victory lane, man. From the back to the front. Congratulations, man. I couldn't be prouder. Hometown win. First win, what a deal. Oh my God. His dad, Troy. Steve, you mentioned it. It was it was race number 139, so 139 starts in the Xfinity Series. And Riley has been knocking on the door over and over and over, but just has not been able to open it. And today it opens here in Las Vegas. So, Junior, you mentioned what happens when a tire tears up that wheel well. It looked like there was stuff flying out even from the inside of the car there. As the smoke fills the cockpit and Riley Herbst <laughs> celebrates on top Watch of the car. Oh. <laughs> He's so happy. That is awesome. <laughs> the relief. <laughs> Can't wait for this interview. just going to start shedding parts now. Dave, can you catch up with him? I'm going to try right now. We're running out of time here, Riley, so we wanted to catch up with you at this enormous moment. Can you believe what can you believe what just happened? No. I'm like, oh my goodness. I love this town. I love this team. Davin Stevo believes in me. But I have to give a big shout out to Richard Boswell cuz I wouldn't be the person I am or the race car driver without him. But I can't, I can't thank Monster Energy enough, Mitch Covington, 
Dave Gallen. Everybody said that I couldn't do it, and those two people stuck behind me my whole career. Oh my goodness, you don't even know what this means, what this takes off my chest. I can't believe it. I love you, Las Vegas. Let's go. Hey, Riley, coming down to the final laps there, what were you hearing, what were you thinking as the laps were winding down? Uh, then I was just, I've been working on myself and everything I can control, and I knew all I could do is all I could do, and if there was a caution, there was a caution, and we were going to race them straight up, but oh my goodness, I, uh, this year was such a failure because we didn't make the playoffs, and it's so embarrassing to be in a car like this that doesn't make the playoffs and walk in the garage each week with your head down, but Dad and Steve and all these guys on the 98 team told me to keep my head up, and we're gonna go win a race, and that's what we did. And I, I just, I can't fathom it. I can't thank Monster Energy enough. I can't thank my grandfather, my mom and dad. I, I'm so emotional. Everybody here at Las Vegas, I love you guys. This is my home. I was born and raised, raised there. So uh, let's go party, and we're, we're gonna celebrate tonight. He did it at home, Rick, big time. And he's about to grab the checkered flag for the first time. The margin of victory, almost 15 seconds between Riley Herbst and John Hunter Nemechek. What a race, what a performance put on by the 24-year-old from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. You saw things blowing out of the driver's side there. Riley Herbst grabs career win number one. The tradition for Riley Herbst has started the fence climb after a win all the way up to the cables for Riley Herbst and all smiles for Riley as well. Get a reminder uh, immediately following our broadcast here on USA we'll go to Petit Lamar from Road Atlanta and again quite a bit of racing still to go uh, on in that race. Tomorrow it's countdown to green on NBC and it starts at two o'clock racing at 2:30, and NASCAR America post race will be just after the checkered flag and that will stream on Peacock as well as we take a look at the playoff standings after one race John Hunter Nemechek now 47 points above Cole Custer has moved above the line and Marty mentioned it earlier it might now be the big four as far as the successes that those top four have had already this season. Yeah, Allgaier and Hill kind of mission accomplished. Not a big gain, not a big loss. Cole Custer, though, he was the big mover of the day. Jumped up into that fourth position. Sheldon Creed and Sammy Smith, you know, it, it's not a must win with two races left, uh, but they're going to have to find some big movement in the points or misfortune of others next week in Miami. At the top of the list, John Hunter Nemechek is the highest as far as the cut line above it and finished second in today's race. He's with Kim. John Hunter Nemechek finishes runner up after coming from the rear of the field. You were able to earn stage points in both stages. Do you feel like you got everything out of the day all considering? Uh, yeah, uh, me and the 98 had the best car. Uh, congrats to Riley. I know he's been trying to win one of these for a long time. And uh, Davin over there on the crew chief, I worked uh, with him in 2018. So. Uh, great group over there, but a uh, solid day for our number 20, Pi Barker Toyota GR Supra. Uh, proud of all the guys on this thing. Um, we didn't get to qualify, so our last. And got up front, uh, battled in, in the top five. I think we got to six for the first stage, so called my shot. Uh, we got stage points and uh, just kind of missed the balance a, a little bit there compared to the 98. But uh, car was as fast as Xfinity 10G. Uh, I think we're some 40 something above the cut line now so solid points day uh just got to keep on with it and looking forward to homestead next week that's plus 47 as he heads to homestead next week pretty impressive all right as we switch gears to the cup series tomorrow can anyone put on a performance like we saw out of riley herps on the cup side well, I think it's interesting to me. There's a racetrack. Everybody got locked on the bottom in the second half of the race. I don't think we'll see that tomorrow. I think the track will be a lot wider. It's going to be a little bit harder to dominate tomorrow the way that Riley did today. Yeah, we saw some tire issues in practice, too. I mean, if those have been taken care of, we don't have a lot of cars that have ran really long runs in practice to find out if that's a field issue or organizational issue, something to pay attention to tomorrow. And again, we saw Chase Elliott with an issue. Uh, 
tire issue put him into the wall so a backup he'll have to start at the back we'll see how he does working his way back up to the front he had a great car uh, in practice before got into the wall see if he can be as competitive tomorrow well it's time now for IMSA racing on USA it's Petit Le Mans and we want to go to Road Atlanta and one of my best mates Lee Diffie with the call. <laughs> 